Hello, and welcome to the Linky Cast. This is the Job Up Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of November <laughs> Sorry. 15th. Sorry. I hate you so much. Why did you, why did you just break up laughing? <laughs> I, I saw a funny video. I nailed it, I and oh, you just I, ruined everything. I thought it was because it was the most emphasis we've heard at the introduction of the book in the past month. <laughs> <laughs> there well, was actual the first emotion to that, that introduction. <laughs> I can hear it. I'm sorry. Can we just keep going with this? Yeah, no, this is good. This is good. Um... Joining me today, I'm self guest Cynic, is Durin. Guys, the world has ended, or at least for Final Fantasy fourteen. What? What are you talking about? Yeah, by the way, they had their their end of the world event where a meteor crashed into the world, um, <laughs> and they're relaunching with their Realm Reborn at some point in the future. Uh, so that's great. Uh, that's my no, no it, it it didn't end with an Inception music. It ended with a comment. <sighs> No, it actually ended with a server crash about ten minutes before it was supposed to end. Aww. And then the timer ran out, everyone got a cutscene. Oh that's sad. So you know, a square enix demo. Thurbleton. Greetings and salutations. What's up? Uh, you gave up on that pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Uh and also joining us, sadly, is Nubarama. Ooh, Moving on. Wait, what the fuck you mean, um, sadly? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how you, you. What have you been fuck up to you. this week, noob? Um, I've been um, doing stuff. Yeah, like like anime. And oh, uh, what anime is you been watching doing now? Anime. Oh, um, there's this really great anime called Boku no Pico. I okay. highly suggest everyone check it out. What's it about? Um, yeah, it's, it's about. It's just hentai. Um. <laughs> Maybe. No, well, no. Last week we had the stunning revelation that you go to sleep with your cock in your hands. I've been watching. I'm not surprised. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's it's like Chun E Bio. You could still be speaking yeah. Japanese, I, I would believe. Um, <laughs> Anything you say. <laughs> sure. Demo Koi Ga Shit I. Yeah. What are you saying? It's, Noob, I believe that's pr- pronounced Yaoi. Oh, it's. Uh, <laughs> it's. I thought it was YOLO. C H U U N I B Y O U space D E M O space capital K O I space G A space S. Why is only one word of those capitalized? Oh, okay. So anime. Yeah, anime. Right. Right. Um. So you've been watching shitty anime. Hey, fuck you. It's good. Hey, I I heard S H I T in there, so yeah, you know, accurate. It, no, it's shit. As in, it's like scat anime, where like the girls eat shit. No, there so was in. Okay, what do you mean right. this week? <laughs> How uh, can you love someone when you can't even eat their poo? Just playing a lot of Guild Wars. Uh, okay, leveling alt. I've been working on a uh, a book. I haven't finished it. I'm actually, about like a third into it, but uh, oh, which one? But no, uh, are you writing a book or are you no, reading it? Okay. No, I'm reading <laughs> oh, a book. What the fuck? All it's right. just more like a, a, I don't have a lot of time to set aside for reading, uh, okay. but it's called the Pentagon's New Map. Hey, that sounds uh, cool. What's yeah. cool. Uh, it's basically just about how uh, we screwed up with, we didn't see 9-11 coming and it's not like a conspiracy book, but it's, it's written by a guy who worked at the Pentagon for over a decade. Right. Jeff Boss that wrote it. No, a guy named Thomas Barnett. Okay. But like, whereas everyone else at the Pentagon's job is to care about war, his job is to care about the transition from war to peace. Okay. Yeah. So that sounds that's really cool. He has a few that's, other books that that's I want like to read. That's like the first legitimate get... book I've heard from you guys. Well, it's the first book I've ever said I've, I've read. Yeah, exactly. I, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm I'm just out of the you group guys are making me feel like podcast literate as fuck the because I'm the literate. only one that doesn't read books. I don't want to. I'd spoil his during. You're as literate as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers, Darren. You have kids, so if you try reading, they'll just grab the book out of your hands and then just try to eat it. Yeah, probably. There's that. Probably. There's food. Yeah. Well, no, because I, like I have a Kindle, so he would just try to poke at it constantly. Mm. He, he, he's, he's, the, the screen's probably cracked something. by now, isn't it? No, no, no. It's it's far out of his reach. Well, he's he's actually okay with, with electronics. He plays with my phone and my wife's phone all the time. Oh. Okay. Like, he actually on my wife's phone. She has a Windows Phone Seven. He actually knows how to go into her Xbox account. And scroll down to the games and go into the game that he wants to get within that. Oh wow, that's crazy! Oh. Wait, yeah, he's he like, two years old. Uh, wow, holy shit! I swear to God, he's gonna be one of those kids that just like take one of your credit cards and just start spending like fifteen hundred dollars on Xbox Live points. As <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm waiting on the news. Man, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah 
good on you, Thurbleton, because you're reading a book that is actually a book. Well, I yeah. I, I made a start on like Destroy Man. Fifty Shades of Grey or something that Shrek yeah. was reading. This no, I, I made a start well, yeah, on Destroy Man, hated it, and put it down. That, that how was is my... how is your novel, uh, noob on Fifty Shades of Green? You're working on that, right? Green? Yeah. Oh. He is. If Fifty Shades of Green, as in like gangrene. Yes. I got a terrible infection last week. It's kind of terrible. But that's out of. I thought you got hit by a plane. <laughs> I did get hit by a plane. And then it gave me an infection. I got gangrene after I got hit by a plane. I had to spend. Anything else you've been hours. doing this week, Doubleton? <laughs> what have you been doing this week? Me? Uh, yeah. uh, I haven't been doing anything else. Okay. Uh, I've. Let's see. I've caught up on a bunch of martial arts movies I hadn't seen. Uh, I was ex- oh, oh, I saw movies. I saw movies. What did you see? I saw. Uh, I rewatched Eastern Promises, and then I watched Letters from Iwo Jima. You're so like fucking that. depressing. I like that. Doesn't involve it. war. <laughs> what Eastern Promises? Have you not seen Eastern? Promises? No, I haven't seen Eastern Promises. No. Okay. Basically, it's like the Russian mafia in um in England. And it's just a really great, great movie. Great movie. Okay. It's David Cronenberg. Okay. I guess what, what I should say is, is do you do anything that doesn't involve war and or politics? Fuck. It has nothing to do with politics. It's it's like more drama, psychological kind of thing. It's David, it's David Cronenberg and Viggo Morrison. So it's like history of violence. Except okay. That. Oh, okay. Tattoos. All right. Interesting. Um, so, and Letters from Iwo Jima made me sort of it, – it made me teary-eyed. But that was about it. Yeah, yeah it, uh, Iwo Jima is a really good one. Um, yeah, Iwo Jima is supposed to be really great. I haven't seen it, it it's so much better than Flags of Our Fathers. That's the yeah, problem. That I watched upset. Flags of Our Fathers, and I was like, I am never watching one of these movies yeah. again. And I put down. <laughs> you have to watch Letters from Iwo Jima because it's a lot more... Iwo Jima is a lot it's better. It's good, it's very as opposed to Flags of Our Fathers. And well, if I, if I recall correctly, Cynic, you've never seen Schindler's List either, though. Uh, no, but I've seen The Pianist. So, <laughs> so you said you've seen the penis. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd hope so. Yeah. I'm male, but yeah, no, I, I, I apparently I the penis what that has is to do worse. With seeing penises. Um, your own noob. It's such an easy. <laughs> so, like, it didn't require a large leap of logic for that. Anyway, um, yeah, apparently the penis is worse than Schindler's. But I've the stuff I've seen from Schindler's on YouTube looks way worse than penis. I don't know. Where to go with well, that? Well, worst as in, like, how? Uh, okay, so, wait, I might be horribly misremembering this, but dude in wheelchair getting tipped out a window, for example, isn't that from Schindler's? Oh, I feel like okay. I recognize that from so, the people. Okay, when you said worse, I thought you meant, like, not as good a movie. I, oh, I was no. Gonna, no, 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 no. Even I, though I haven't good. seen The Pianist, I, probably, I was still going to disagree. Yeah. No, I've heard yeah, Schindler's like, is good. Watching Schindler's List, is like, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah, but it's one of those movies like that I feel like everybody should probably still watch. Maybe like you should, like everybody should experience that movie. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying Letters from Iwo Jima is the best movie in the world. It's no. just it's better it's than Flags of Our Fathers. Oh yeah. God, Flags of Our Fathers, that movie. No, like independently, without comparing it to that bad movie, it's it's, yeah, actually it's a really great movie. Yeah, it's, it's decent. Like it's it's not it's not even as much about war as it is just about. I am. It's not shitting commentary, you. commentary on like the Japanese at the time. Like when I when I say that up until Flags and Our Fathers, I used to watch every movie I started to completion, and Flags of Our Fathers was the final movie that I maintained that policy for. I'm not. I'm. I'm telling the absolute truth. It broke my my continuing faith in. Hey, maybe this movie has some re- redeeming qualities. That movie was so fucking bad. I, I've I've now start I'm now able to tap out of a movie before it's finished. That's how bad it is. <laughs> I also try to watch Iron Sky. I loved Iron ago. Sky. That was so good. What the fuck is wrong with this? It was so it was good. the most boring stale movie I've ever uh, seen. It wasn't offensive. It was just boring. So good. Just, oh my just God. to be sure, Iron Sky is the one where the Germans Nazis really the went to the Nazis moon. Nazis on the moon. Yeah, it is. And then they're so like, good. the black guy back. goes to the moon and he turns white, and that's that's what? the story. Yay. It's so hilarious. <laughs> Is actually not funny. I find it. I found good. it incredible. Okay, what what kind of movie? What do you consider a funny movie, noob? Um, like Jack and Jill. Um, like that movie where Adam Sandler's dad, or he's a father, who who knocked up his teacher at grade two. That that kind of movie is really funny. I believe he's referring to "That's My Boy" with. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm like that kind of. Like, I, I only I only know that because I work every retail store. Movie. And put that on the no, show. 
yeah, <sighs> those are my favorite. So yeah, I, I would still recommend Iron Sky because apparently no, was a, don't watch Iron Sky. It's really it's good, not funny. It's, it's really boring. funny. It's le- it's Terrible. really funny. But it's also one of those I movies you should watch with friends. Something like Wreck It Ralph. It's like the second called. worst movie I saw this year after Ted, which I found offensive to watch. I, I've heard Ted's pretty bad, but yeah. it's 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 Family Guy live action. And that's the worst possible thing you can get out of a film. But the movies I ended up watching this week were uh, Ip Man, which is apparently, which is, came highly, highly recommended as a martial arts movie. It's about um, the guy who went on to train Bruce Lee. Um, He's probably his his greatest claim claim to frame. Um, It was pretty good. Frame. Frame. Uh, it was pretty. It was pretty good. I, 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 <laughs> You're not going to correct yourself on that. No. You said frame again. I, yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I, I, I found it. I got what that movie delivered from Fearless, the Jet Li movie, and Fearless is probably my favorite kung fu slash martial arts movie at the moment. Uh, followed very closely by The Raid, and not, none of the movies I ended up watching. I think I watched quite a few others, but since not none of them really compared to those two. I'd say I wouldn't really necessarily bother calling them out on this podcast. But yeah, no, it's 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 fun watching stupid kung fu movies every now and then. So that was what I did this week. Thank you for asking, Therableton. Durin. No problem. What yes. are you up to this week? Uh I played a little bit more Halo 4. Um I watched some some kind of bad uh reality ghost hunting shows. <laughs> Um, what? <laughs> were you watching the History Channel? Because that's no, 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 like no. I, I don't watch normal television. So if it's it, basically if it's on Netflix, I'll watch it. Okay. Um, so History I watched uh, so a show called uh, Ghost Hunters International and uh-huh. another one called Ghost Labs. Oh jeez. Oh my god. Wait. So I, I'll have to point out here that Ghost Hunters International is most probably. A riff on the name Monster Hunter International, which is the book I continue to recommend to you, but you refuse to read. But aside from that, well, no, uh, no, Ghost Hunters is actually a, was already a pre-existing show. Ghost, Ghost Hunters International is when they they had like formed a group that oh, left God. the United States and, and traveled all over the world to different haunted places trying to get you know ghosts. So why uh, did you watch these movie these TV series? Because uh, a while back I watched a different one. Um, called ghost adventures which was <laughs> fucking terrible but in like the most entertaining adventures. way jesus christ <laughs> oh it was great it had the most meathead of meatheads on there okay um just making fools in themselves on the camera oh man the pyramids weren't made by aliens they were made by ghosts <laughs> <laughs> and like it, it, it was it was bad in like every way possible um right. but but you enjoyed it. It made it entertaining. Okay, <laughs> it's so a I, guilty like, pleasure. <laughs> yeah, like I, I I watched through all they had on on Netflix, and then I went to basically try to find other shows like that because I think that show got canceled after two seasons. Uh-huh. Not surprisingly, <laughs> that is yeah, a surprise. wow. Um, <laughs> and I've not found one that's quite as entertaining. Uh, the Ghost Hunters International they they basically rarely ever actually find any kind of quote unquote evidence. I have to, um, again during. Hate to break it to you, but ghosts aren't real. <laughs> well, no, no, no. That, that, that hence the quotes. Um, okay, but oh right. So, so well, we, again, like 40, like we can't minutes. see the quotes over the internet. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I said, I said, quote unquote. Okay, sure, ghosts. sure, sure. Um, oh, I thought you meant quote unquote. Or they're evidence. just quotes empty. Em- those are just empty. Well, that's quotes. what I meant. Like evidence, like <laughs> okay, ghosts. Like sure. Clearly, they didn't find anything. All right. Um, the pure and then the other show is actually the opposite, where. They somehow like everywhere they go, they get the most clearest of clear um, EVPs <laughs> and like images they think they see in the pictures and stuff. Sure, but clearly they're just making it themselves because you can actually, in in a lot of the cases, you can hear that that is their voice. Uh. <laughs> like there was one that was a female oh, that sounded like program. the only female on their team. That's the future. Uh so 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 i've been doing that okay um, sure <laughs> for some reason um Wait, why why not, why are you watching those he's he, well, so, okay. you want to recapture when, the magic when, of the previous ghost show he watched uh, do you find that exactly. weird nubarama i do find that weird <laughs> the fact that he would try okay, to go so, back to that job when, when, when i'm not eating dinner at my computer uh okay I, 
my wife and I will watch something on TV while we eat dinner. Uh huh. Um, and that, that Ghost Adventures will be what we watch. I find really before. sad that it goes that way around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What do you mean that it goes that There's way? There's so around? much other better programming on no, no, Netflix, no. like anime I, I, or pornography. When I'm not eating dinner at my computer, I eat dinner with my wife. That should be the <laughs> other way around. I'm yeah, pretty you, sure. You need to work to, to swap, well, see, you know, swap those two. We don't, have, we, don't have a, we don't have a dining room table anymore because okay. we're in a smaller apartment now, and our, our dining room is literally where I'm sitting right now Okay. Um, at my computer desk. Uh huh. Um, so it is basically either eat at desk mm-hmm. or – Straddle plate and lap and eat on the uh, ca- the couch. Okay. Why not on the so, floor? So what? Because uh, he's not I'm, he's not an animal. He's not a fucking yeah. animal. <laughs> hey <laughs> man, why I didn't be off the floor. Back home in North Korea, <laughs> wood is used for the say, glorious communist in, cause. I decided to say I'm not in, Japan. I'm not in Japan. Japan. Yeah, he's not in Japan. Um. Well, have, like, so yeah, that's, that's what, um. But. God, I feel like I've been doing something else, but I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, all those fantastic times spent with ghost stories, and that's why you watched all of these. <laughs> oh, God. I guess it's pretty much just like you know, getting in as much Guild Wars three times as I can. Okay. Um, I did. I did check in with uh, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic because mm-hmm. that went free today. Yay! Uh, and Woo, time so to I went check. out there and I, I checked out what their free store is and like what their transition to free was, mm-hmm. and damn. <laughs> Um, you Worked have to that pay well, huh? to to hide your head slot item. Uh, mm. That sounds like uh, I think free to play has reached a new level. That's pretty sad. Yeah. Um, also, the other thing I noticed, and, and, and like some of this, some of the stuff is okay. Like th- there's things like you know expand your your storage and expand your inventory and um, access the guild bank. Like those are all microtransaction things that are available to you, uh, for free to subscribers. Um, so in a lot of cases, there is a means of unlocking what would be subscriber only items through their cash shop. Um, but there's one way where they will never be equal. Um, and that is as a subscriber or as a, as a free player, you are limited to how many war zones you can do each week. And war zones are basically their, uh, um, stru- or, yeah, their structured PVP. Um, and you're limited to like, I think it's like three or something per week, like three matches per, per week or maybe five per week or I don't remember, mm-hmm. uh, but you're, you're limited. Um, you, so you can buy an upgrade that allows you to have unlimited access to those war zones for seven days. Okay. That's there. There's no, there's no permanent unlimited uh. access to this, for, you know, say 20 bucks or something. So <laughs> if you want unlimited access to features of the game, like back of the box features of the game, um, you you either be a subscriber or pay weekly for those things. Okay, so it's more like a demo than free to play. Kind of. I mean, it's like yeah, see, it, free to see so the, as a pay to play. Side, like on the plus side, you know, it does only give you two character slots for the free to play. Um, but that's a plus. You side. are able to like all the classes <laughs> are available. What? Well, oh, no, I'm saying all the classes are available though. Um, for free okay. to play, so walk out of certain classes. Uh, not all the races are, but that doesn't really fucking matter because everyone's going to make human anyway. Since the others and are terrible. they all look human regardless. Yeah, uh, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's, it's human or red human with spikes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, or I, I George George probably, Binks. Well, what is he? A Gungan? I forget what they're called. Who? Oh, Did no, you those make George yeah. Binks in any of those no, Star those are, Wars those games? Are Were there any so Gungan one. Jedi? Uh, I, I hope probably not. Probably extended <laughs> universe somewhere. Man, I mean. <laughs> That'd be sad if there wasn't. There was a hot Jedi. Th- there was a hot Jedi? That's cool. Yeah, there was a hot Jedi in That's the extended cool. universe. Um, it's kind of a shit Jedi when you can't really jump around or move wait, or anything. Are all the so, huts so, that big? All the classes. What's that? Are all the huts that the big hut? and fat? Yes. They are, they are yeah, like big. adults, they're that big, I think. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought morbidly obese people. Like I, th- I thought Jedi were agile. There's some sort of training involved to become a Jedi. <laughs> that's why the picture of the, that's why the picture of the the hut Jedi is fucking hilarious because <laughs> he he's clearly just sitting there still. Oh and, God! Like, what the hell? Flailing is this? his lightsaber. <laughs> um. But yeah. Anyway, getting back to to the old Republic. Maybe he's like uh, so All the classes. Jedi. He's a, like all the classes are available movie. to you. Um, to the free to play and all the the um, leveling content. From one to fifty is available to you for free to play. So 
you could actually go straight from um you know beginning to end with every class and just deleting characters as you go or you know i i, I, I imagine somewhere in there there's the ability to lock unlock um more character classes for the free to play so like that part is kind of cool especially considering like that leveling process is really pretty much the best part of the game anyway right um Plus, as somebody who had played the game prior and had made eight characters, um, it was nice to see that even though I'm, you know, have been dropped down to a free to play account that is limited to two character slots, it appears as though they let me keep all eight of my characters, and I believe I still have access to all eight of them. Okay, that's that sounds good. I guess like so. It, long story short, I you you think you're going to go back with two Star Wars? Oh ever? hell no. Okay. No. Didn't think oh, so. Fuck. Like I. If the summer drought is real bad, I might go back in there and, and uh, check out my uh, Imperial Agent because I heard that was the best story in the game and I never finished it. Yep. Um, but that would pretty much be the extent of it because in kind of in a in a post uh, Guild Wars Two world, I don't I don't see the relevance for games like Star Wars anymore. Aww. <laughs> wait like, oh speaking of like you... even, even secret world is okay it, like that has its place Terra still i think to some extent has its place right um and, and I, I feel like even you know lord of the rings online when it comes out or lord of the rings oh god um <laughs> elder scrolls online when it comes out yeah um, i think might have its place and i will the, the argue with you incredible i will argue that but sure go on <laughs> yeah Depending on how things work out, that could be even potentially have its place. But really? I feel like Do you Star think there's Wars, any likeliness of it ever working out well for that game? I don't. There, there is if yeah. if the game actually launches as a free to play game, similar to what Guild Wars Two did. Uh, then, then absolutely, uh, they haven't nailed down and said this is what our our model is going to be. You're a hopeless. But all of the hype you. around that game has died, and I don't think it's hit. There rock was never bottom. hype around the game. There was no hype around that game. I'm yeah. with Duran on no. that one. Like people, like they announced it, and people in the audience were just like, "Wait, you're, yeah, you're, what?" That that story they said on the podcast a while ago was kind of sad. Where, where yeah, like I think people in the room were actually looking around at each other, like, "Is are they for real?" <laughs> yeah, like, as as if yeah, exactly. Pretty much the opposite of what you want as a developer if you're announcing your game to yeah. Google like, journalists. But uh, I, I want to say there was even like delayed applause because they weren't ah like. Just weren't really sure, but but at the same time, like after they after they showed off that gameplay trailer not too long ago, that like nine minute trailer, like it could be interesting what they're doing. The PvP, they're clearly um, taking a lot of cues from Guild Wars Two. Um, they're doing I, I something s- kind of to, still uh, strongly disagree. That there's anything interesting about that P- that trailer or anything similar that they've released in the past. I, I've pretty much watched mo- most of what that game has shown, especially with the lead up to some of the Skyrim DLC. But um, no, yeah, I, I sure I, you are you are an optimist, Duran. In this case, uh, I'll let you have well, that. And, I, I, and I'm saying that like there's the potential for it. Whereas with Star Wars: Old Republic, I feel like that game lost its relevance almost. I mean, a lot of us didn't know it at the time, especially those of us that actually bought it and played it. But kind of lost its relevance before it ever came out. Yeah, pretty much. Man, but how about the new Star Wars movies? Won't they reinvigorate the interest wait, in Star wait, wait, Wars: wait, The Old Republic? No, because I think by the time those release, oh, um, The Old Republic is probably going to have shut down. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think free to play is going to work out for them in the long run. I think it's. A, it's yeah, I mean, even with them rushing it, like, what's the first movie release? Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, it's, not, it's not too far. The first one. Yeah. Oh wait, it's, it's two years. It's, it's, it's over a year away, and it took less for that game. Than to go free to play. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, the free to play um, was clearly a desperation move. So, I mean, in the same time they announced free to play, they dropped the price of the game from fifty dollars to fifteen. Man. Anyway, the game is not on two years from now. <laughs> Anything else been doing? What, so, Ghost. One thing. What, what's up, dude? Yeah, Ghost Jedi's. Uh, Wait, Noob Rama has uh, something to uh, say. What do you What do you have so, to say, Noob? So I just linked a Star Wars wiki thing, and then I delve into the pit of Star Wars wiki articles. God. Then I somehow got to the Jar Jar Banks page, as you do, because he's my hero. <laughs> Apparently. According yeah, to it's wiki. like it's like six um, degrees of Jar Jar. All yeah, roads Jar Jar Banks' his <laughs> father, his name is George. It's just plain George. That's his father's <laughs> name. <laughs> George R. Binks. <laughs> George R. Binks. <laughs> yep. Fuck. I hate you so and much. His, his father was like <laughs> suicidal because his son was so stupid. And that's about it. You made that like part his, of his, No, 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 no. 
look, look, look. A month later, George and his wife and George were all stranded on a desert island. This caused George to lament over what he could have been, called his son an Im- imbecile, and attempted to commit suicide. <laughs> What? <laughs> I call, I call you BS. Where is this? I, I'm clicking the link now. Scroll down to biography. This was, uh, you were, you gotta remember, Cynic, we're talking about extended universe stuff, so this was probably something written by a fan of Star Wars who fucking hates Jar Jar. <laughs> so they're like, I'm gonna write this motherfucker. He he is the imbecile that we all know he is. I don't care what George says. Yeah, yeah. I, I Yeah, okay. That explanation I will believe, as opposed to pretty much know. anything else. This is dumb. This is dumb. This is, this is like the, the life story of a hero. Who saves Naboo? Oh, so so shifting gears for just a little bit, and and I'm not <laughs> really we can, we can away move on from past. Star Wars extended fiction. Yes, Thank you. away from Star Wars Thank extended you, fiction. Jordan. Something more relevant. Jar Jar put Vita. his large dong into X girl something Star Wars fan okay. fiction. But no, we're going to move away from that and to something more relevant, the Vita. Okay. Um, so I, I wanted to get your take as the only other person that I know who owns a Vita. Sure. Um, PlayStation Plus coming to Vita, giving away Uncharted, Gravity Rush, and like every other decent thing that is there out there for Vita. What the fuck? I think that PlayStation Plus was going to head to Vita anyway, because it's kind of their well, own right. strategy. Yeah. Um, and they had to pick games which they had which they, to give away, because part of the advertising point of PlayStation Plus is to be your instant games library, right? Um, mm-hmm. And Uncharted's first party, and it's probably sold as much as it's going to sell, so... I'm not surprised. I don't know. I well, I'm mostly surprised because Uncharted and Gravity Rush are two of the uh, six games that they're they're doing, and those are pretty much the only two games, yeah, for the Vita yeah. that you want to buy right now. Pretty pretty much, but then they're they've been out for half a year. Like it's it's not they they aren't cannibalizing sales too much. And PlayStation Plus is what fifty dollars a year for Sony. It's also too bad. Yeah. I, but my main question is, um, if you're a PlayStation Plus like subscriber. Does that like it are those over. two linked? Yeah, like do you yeah. have to play? If you are currently a PlayStation Plus subscriber, then on the nineteenth, I believe, when when this goes live, um, you will also have Vita PlayStation Plus as well. That's cool. I'm I'm totally down yeah. for that. So. Like I'm like tomorrow, I, I'm going to like tomorrow's payday. I'm going to go ahead and finally take Stop the dive up. on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, because I was already going to buy Gravity Rush anyway. I've been kind of looking at it for the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. It's like 35 bucks or I can just pay 50 for PlayStation Plus right. and have all of this. Exactly. So and, it's and, and, and all the and, and all the PlayStation 3 stuff. Yeah. So yeah, this is finally the thing that kind of tipped me over on PlayStation Plus. And I was just curious what your take on it was. No, if, I'm, I'm if totally this was enough for you to also look at it. Uh I I probably cuz I don't want either of those games and I'm not in the position to have more monthly things take it from me um i i don't think i will but if there is something awesome on there eventually then i probably will i don't know but at the moment i'm not too but I, i'm not surprised by it but i'm not really enticed by it either so the i think the, the strangest one even beyond i think uncharted um is the inclusion of final fantasy tactics uh war of the lions it's real good a psp game yeah but I mean, like it's weird that that's included it's, it's in this probably first because set they of looked at games. what people actually bought for their Vitas, and I'm one of those people who bought Final Fantasy Tactics for my Vita, so they, <laughs> they probably know what they're doing at that point. Because I looked at it like, yeah, yeah, if I if I didn't own that already, that'd totally be the only game in that list I'd be interested in. But since I do, yeah, yeah, I don't know. like I want to I, w- I want to trade in my copy of Uncharted that I have, right? Uh, that that's probably pretty but smart. At the same time, well, but at the same time, like I'm worried because like I'm thinking. A year from now, if I decide I don't want PlayStation Plus anymore, if I already traded my Uncharted, I don't have it anymore. But then, like, do I care? Do you, you don't care? That's the answer. Like, I don't. I've got a stack of games under my d- table that I will never play again, ever. <laughs> but I'm not going to trade them in because I don't support used games. But that's like a different discussion entirely. It's it's very yeah. Like it, it, it's fine for you to trade that shit in. You're not going to play it again. I'm tra- it's Uncharted. I, I've, yeah, I don't plan I, to play I, I don't two don't support again. Used games either, but when it gets to redundancy like this, like I feel like that's the most logical option. Yeah, and, and yeah. maybe to do so like tomorrow before they fucking like plummet the trade in value on the game come Monday. Anyway, uh, I guess we can move on to Guild Wars Two news. That's yeah, sure. But we'll we'll do that. Who knows what happened this week? Because I fucking sure else don't. Durin. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, no. Go ahead. I always so want they to basically more added now. this gold box to everyone's inventory, and if you open it, it gives you eight gold. It was pretty cool. 
Uh, I know that did not happen. <laughs> Am I, I the only one that got that gold box? I still Wait, have what? like 70 silver. <laughs> okay, so you just need to open the gold box. You got it in your mail. It should be there. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't think I did. It's it's only if you had the premium membership. Yeah, if you bought the digital deluxe edition. <laughs> so five people were like, in we're, this we're game. sorry. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. That would be gold. Fa- that would be fantastic if that's what they did. <laughs> and how about like a heartfelt sorry <laughs> note from every arena developer? I think then I might forgive arena net. It's actually inscribed on the back of each of those coins. You just need yeah. to kind of line them up, puzzle puzzle yep. style. Yeah, and then and then they're actually made out of chocolate, and you can eat them. Like those are the best gold coins. <laughs> and then you don't have fuck to you, eat arena net. You fucking pieces of shit. Give me my twenty dollars. Thermalton. <laughs> you think As- they'd add in like gems with that shit? But no, 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 no. <laughs> they give you nothing. They give you nothing. As but, the yeah, person who I, knows, I think for this week's, they, they they just said they did you know routine maintenance. Uh, I think on the fourteenth they did a update where they just fixed uh, a bug with diminishing returns and explorer modes. But I don't think there's been any up- updates. Nothing, nothing really? major. Sure, <laughs> other like, than the gold box. No, because yeah. I, like, I, I launched it was two, and like there was this really huge download, like four thousand files or something. I didn't know what it's about. It's, it was <laughs> a, it like, was a big box bug update for the digital dungeon, dungeon thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably just a virus, considering that there's just yeah. Pro- I mean, probably clearly. Fucking, I just arena viruses fuck. worst. Yeah, it is the worst. All right, this um, seems to be funny. I, I, you <laughs> know, I think I think it's just a bunch of JPEG files or art files of Morsat for Guild Wars Two. That's what it's going to be. So the Lost Shore is like they did, uh, they did a bunch of bans on hunters or ranks rather. <laughs> And like, not all of them were bots. Was that this week? Oh, what? Is this actual news that happened? Well, really? Well, it's. I mean, it's it's semi news, but they just, they did a bunch of bans on rangers, and uh, not all of them were bots. Some of them were players, <laughs> and so they had to, like petition. It's like, hey, can I have my account back? And it's like, oh, sorry about that. Right. So the war against it's, bots. You know what they right? probably they did? Pay, they so- just banned in any ranger that walked into Frostgore Sound for like a set amount of period. <laughs> And then yeah, that's it, how they banned all of them. Anytime a ranger had their pet kill somebody that they didn't touch. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yep. But, but anyway, so the Lost Shores is happening this week. Um, I'm, I'm, it is. You might be wondering why we're recording this episode so early and putting it up so early, I hope. Assuming I get this up in time. But uh, yeah, like so this is being recorded the day before Lost Shores starts because we obviously want to be playing over the weekend. Um, and at the, at the time of this... I believe we've just gotten the huge fucking download patch that unlocked, uh, obviously that content for tomorrow, but also the cool what PvP map that that came with yeah. this patch, right? Very cool map. Yeah, yeah. I, I I did a run around on it. Um, I haven't done a ton of fighting, but I've got, I've gone to explore the map. And I think Durin has too. Yeah, so we, we I think you, me, Durin, we we've definitely done one round at least on that. Um, and I, you've done a bit more, but so so the, the, the let's tally it all up. So there's the new um map then there've been changes to dungeon bosses right uh yeah it's well the preliminary did uh, search some people ran uh one of the paths in uh, Ascalon catacombs and found that the final boss had a reward that was unique to him and it was it um, was an exotic right yeah it was an exotic it was like a back piece i think but it was like it was uh, account bound uh but it's like once you use it you could so you could transfer it to other characters it just be soul bound once you use it Okay, cool. So yeah. essentially, they've uh, and and I think they've up rewards as well. Maybe, maybe. From what they said, uh, they're I, making money hand over fist, but it could just be the same as getting a golden box that shows up on your screen. I haven't seen it, so <laughs> right. <laughs> it's yeah, I've been sick. hearing I've been hearing people talk uh, about getting quite a bit more money from from running their dungeons. I know uh, Shinboy ran one today, and from doing just one path, he got like a round of gold. Yeah, exactly. I, well, he, he did three runs, and I think he got three gold or so from those three runs. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty, Which before, I think it was like roughly about, what, 25 to 30 silver? It was like, well, yeah, it was like, it was like 40-ish. Um, but now, yeah, significantly heightened okay. from what, what they've been able to get. I'm not sure how much of that is from selling stuff on the trading post and affected by how prices have changed there. But um, in general, it seems like uh, the people who know about dungeon drop rates are saying there are more drops from dungeons so that's pretty cool this is a this is an awesome feature i didn't realize my first time reading through the patch notes 
Um, if anybody who's done dungeons before knows that, like, if you're the first person to go in, you're effectively the owner of the dungeon, right? Mm-hmm. If you leave the group, rather than you leaving the dungeon, everyone else in the group leaves because you're the owner of the dungeon. Okay. Uh, apparently, people have been doing that to like kick out puggers and invite their own friends for the final boss sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's what they've Now, been. if you are the owner and you leave the group, everyone leaves the dungeon. Yay! Including you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that go could, that could go badly. That could go very yeah. badly. Yeah, I was going to say, like the, the ideal way to do that would be just to transfer leadership over to somebody else, like migrate the, the server or whatever. Like yeah. I don't know if that's something that's possible with their technology. Maybe, but I, I don't know. Like I'd the problem, not possible. the problem they're trying to fight is that 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 thing because because of how the dungeons have changed. Now you get all your um your tokens from the final boss essentially. Um, so people have really just gotten pogs going and then kicked people from the um the dungeon just at the end to get their friends to get those tokens. Fucking worst. Like these are scum, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But, like, I don't know if this is the best way to fix it. I mean, it'll hopefully at least be something of a positive step. I don't know how well dungeons have progressed in terms of connectivity and continued stability. Um, I'm assuming they've improved since release since a bunch of people have been running dungeons and they're never really complaining about it. So hopefully it'll end up pretty well. But obviously there'll be things like connection issues coming into it, which maybe sometimes your dude will disconnect and therefore you lose the dungeon. But that's not, that's not much different from, say, for example, Dumb- Diablo 3 when you're running with a group. Like, shit can happen like me disconnecting just before the final boss and me losing my progress. Stuff like that happens in any online connected game. So I'm not really particularly um, yeah. worried about that. So it's probably a good change. I don't know. I, I, I just found out about, about this now, so you're hearing my immediate reactions. Um, so there's that. This is fresh. Fresh. Uh, so there's like that. There is so potential of um, like unique drops from end of dungeon bosses. Now that is, I think, is pretty cool. During what? What are your thoughts on that? I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> the, the unique drops at the uh, for for certain paths. For oh yeah, no, no. Actually, that, that's actually really good because um, it, it, it's something they've been trying to work towards. Is like like not forcing people, but like giving people reasons to do more than just running that one path because it's the fastest way to get whatever. Absolutely. Um, and, and they've done some things in the past to try, try to do that or try to encourage that yeah. um, with, you know, yeah, the okay dungeon results. scaling. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, the dungeon yeah, scaling yeah. at the end of a path. Like they, they've gotten some did. results out of it, but not nearly maybe what they wanted. So I feel like this might actually push it in that direction finally, um, at least to some extent. Obviously, once you've gotten whatever the unique thing is from, from that path, you're probably going to be less likely to want to, you know, continue running that one. Yeah, um, but at well, least you can a sell. I think direction. for some of them, you can like some of the crazy drops you can get from dungeons now. You can sell, and apparently some of them are worth up in the ranges of like twenty gold or so. But I know that the oh. like the, the really cool like that drop I think is account bound on pickup. So I I don't think you can sell that one. So you're probably right in that case. Assuming people want to be jerks about it and not run a dungeon again just because they have the final piece, which is something people do. It's an MMO, I guess. Yep. Even if you can't, can you throw uh, soulbound uh, items into the Mystic Forge? That's uh, something we should test is if these things are Mystic Forge compatible. Uh, I, I just know that. Uh, I think you can. With, but with or without yeah, the Forge, so. you're getting uh, a higher chance to get rares and exotics in the dungeons. Okay. Uh, or at least from like the fun, like at least from the bosses. Right. And. They've made a slight increase, so from like point not 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 one percent to you know two percent <laughs> uh, chance of getting uh, legendary exotic uh, like you know prereqs okay. from the Mystic Forge. Okay, cool. And that, so that's just run more dungeons, throw them in the forge. Yeah, mm. that, that that would definitely be an option. Um, well, whether you'd be wanting an exotic or perhaps an ascended item, that's the discussion for later this episode. Uh, <laughs> So, yes, that, that's pretty cool. So, nice new items from and completing dungeons. Dungeons have gotten better, just just in general, apparently, in terms of um, return on your investment of time. Uh, but I, I think the Is coolest that the patch thing... patch note? Dungeons have gotten better? That's just uh, the that's, patch note. Yeah, that should I be believe the patch, the patch note, note says, Dungeons have gotten better on Friday nights for Lincoln Force. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened last week with the uh, karaoke. <laughs> but, anyway... So that those are two some some of the changes. So obviously easier to get legendary prereqs, but we speculated on that last week. Um, dungeons have gotten better, 
and the new PvP map. So let's talk about that. Um, Durbleton, you're the one who, as soon as I got online today to start recording this episode, were like, no, no, no. Before you start recording, you should see, you should see this map. You were pretty impressed by it. What are your thoughts? Give us a run through what it is and what are your thoughts? Well, I just spent a lot of time doing like the, the, the last new one they added was Raid on Capricorn, which, I mean, it's, it's campy and fun with the cannon, but this one is a <laughs> lot more mobile. Right. Plus, it's, for anybody who doesn't know, it's a giant uh, Kodan ship that yeah. you're fighting on. Yeah. And while, while the Lincoln Force may not, uh, everyone may not approve of the underwater fighting of Kodan ships, <laughs> fighting on a giant iceberg is awesome. I agree. And so uh, it's it's a lot of uh, there, there's three points like normal. They all mm-hmm. follow that uh, all the, they all follow that same uh, design. But rather than any one like a, uh, a, a guild lord or the uh, uh, Nifil buffs, uh, there's like there's these uh, commune buffs. Uh, there's four of them in in the map. Right. And those are the main like auxiliary way to get uh, a point increase on top of just killing people or capping points. Yeah. That's a, and so it's, it's uh, kind of crazy. So essentially, you start the map off. I, I, I'm going to give you at least my first look at it because it's, again, Thurbleton's like, "Hey, you need to try this map out." I, I jump into the aisles, I load up my launcher, and it's, it's been added to the normal rotation. So as soon as that ended, it went over to um, Forest and Devil as, as usual. But so mm-hmm. we, we jumped into the map that was running at the time, and so I jumped, jumped into the map. Immediately, it starts you off at least for the side we're on in like this floating like platform which it turns out to be like the tip of one of the um they the of the ships of the many tips of the ship i, I forgot what they're called not bow tips is it, of the ship is, is that, that bow slash airship it, it, is the bow st- is it the bow it? The, the very front of the ship or is that the st- yeah it's bow it's bow. like that's the it's big the bow. like yeah planks yeah sticking out yeah yeah the bow um so it starts off with the bow the me- one of the many bows of um the large kodan ship and I almost got a sense of vertigo because you can, when you're looking down, the map is huge. Like it's, it's gigantic. You can see most of it from the starting point, which is kind of interesting in itself. And then you jump through a teleporter and you start. Um, and immediately I was also overwhelmed by what the fuck to do because there is the three control points on the map, but there's also the three um, nodes on the map, which confer buffs. It's also really, really weird that um, the announcer goes, a buff is now available or some shit like that. Like when they become like uncontested, um, the, the natural literally just calls it a buff and on your screen in the alerts, it just says buff. And I'm like, okay, that's a bit inside baseball. But anyway, so you start off and it's a normal three point capture map as you'd expect, but the actual distances between each of the capture points are a, I'd say a, a little bit longer than usual. Probably. I do, I, I, guess. I think I think a good word for it for the distances is winding paths. Yeah, because no, because the actual like overhead distance isn't that much different than it would be for example any other point in any other um, PvP map that I remember. I'm, I'm trying to think back through them. Maybe going from like the opposite sides of uh, Battle for Kylo. No, not yeah. Battle for Kylo would be a bit longer, I'd say, because that's all the way across the map. These ones, it's more of a triangle than a straight line, so it obviously is shorter than that. But at the same time, there's winding paths, as, as Doubleton says, between them. So you have to like go upstairs and like jump. Not, not really jumping, but it, in some cases you, it would be faster if you jump small crevices and stuff like that on, on the way between these these points. I found that pretty cool. Like, I, I was relatively surprised by their willingness to go like a little bit abnormal uh, in what would eventually i guess you can level it as being hey the aesthetics are a large part of this map like it is beautiful and that's probably a good thing because they want to be they they want to diversify how the maps look and you look at this map it looks absolutely nothing like any of the other maps you're, you're working with now whether those aesthetics got in the way of an efficient pvp map like whether the winding paths between points are particularly interesting because to some extent like it was cool because t- because the point like the paths are winding, I would not necessarily see who was on a capture point before I got there. So that, that could be one point of contestation um, and interestingness to any form of competitiveness on those maps. Especially, like just the, the the general denial of information is pretty high on this map because like there's that, but also like for example, if you're um, on Forest and Nivelhill, a large part of the um, 
tactical advantage comes from scouting areas. And there, there obviously are like um, small bottlenecks in, in Forest and Niffelhell where you're forced to go through archways and so on and so forth. And you can't see too much of the map except for perhaps at the very top in the keep. Um, in this, there's more of that. Like, there's far more of, in, of a situation where you might not necessarily know unless you just happen to have one of your team in that area what's going on, which is pretty cool in itself. But aside from that, I, I guess we're kind of dancing around it. There's the buffs. Like, the buffs themselves are what yeah. makes this map unique. Thurbs? Um, I only know what two out of the three buffs are, and I say that even though I previously said there's four buffs. Two oh, of them four? are the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's three, there are three buffs, but there are two points that give you the there, same Yeah, there are three types okay. of buffs. All right. Yeah. Um, the, I actually the, have them the, up in front of me right now. The two most common ones to get, okay, you can, you can tell me what the yeah. second one is. The two most common ones you can get are these claws are on the bottom, and I should preface that anybody who goes in here is going to uh, get confused. You still see the pillar of light where the buff will spawn. Yeah. But it only is you can only activate it when it's got like the the symbol claw of the buff. or bear yeah the symbol on it. Yeah. Um, and that's just you know a quick commu- uh, commune of a uh, power sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, like it's, it's very point. similar to exactly like a skill point. So you'd be walking up to a pillar of light and there's a orb in the middle of it if it's available to be activated, and that orb in this case would have the symbol of the buff on it. Yeah. Um, the, so there's commune time. Yeah. There's, uh, there's, yes, and actually, okay. uh, t- like a red team and a blue team can commune at the same one without like any interruption. But if you attack somebody while communing, they stop. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like they cast. they pretty much ripped out. It is straight up communing from PVE. Like if you get attacked, you get interrupted, mm-hmm. and it takes about that time. Like it takes a long time, pretty much like you would a skill point to commune these capture points. It's and then you have like that skill point, like colorful flash of energy i don't remember because we were in combat uh-huh. at the time but yeah, yeah it, it's in the floor of combat it's hard to tell but yeah, wait anyway until people are at like the beginning of the map always saying don't attack while commuting please <laughs> and then like, vote kick. <laughs> this guy attacked me while i was attack commuting, while commuting. <laughs> this, these buffs are actually pretty good um the the two mo- two common ones on the, the south side uh give every time you kill somebody uh you normally get like what one point for uh your team uh, right. in, in this uh, case, it's three, I believe. Okay, well, uh, with a buff, it's plus three. Right. Yeah. So you're you're doubling the value, um, and then the if during if you want to say what the the middle point is on the planks. Um, well, the other thing to note on that is that uh, there are two of those, like you said. Um, oh, yeah. Those can stack, so yes, that will do. actually that will earn you up to eleven points for a kill. And even more uh, so, is, those. I'm fairly certain when you get it, it gives it to everybody on your team, and it's like forty yeah. seconds long. I just yeah, just to be clear here, team. so you normally get five for a kill, then three additional for five, each. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. So three okay. additional for each of these buffs. So three, five plus six. There you go. Um, gotcha. But yeah, so eleven points per kill significantly changes how PvP would happen on this map, because uh, like I don't think in any other case in any other map even, there is even remotely an equivalency between getting kills and winning the match. In most cases, like if you're actually competitive PvP, you'd rather be capping or holding than getting kills. But mm-hmm. this entirely upsets that balance, which is kind of cool. Yeah, well, and like the only thing that worries me about it is, to some extent, um, I could see that potentially, like almost maybe turning the the importance um, of of kills to um, gathering points. Because like if you if you rush for those two uh, buffs and you manage to get both of them for your team. You almost don't need to bother with points at that point. Just like zerg around the map, kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Like it's only fifty kills at that point for a victory. Um, yeah, so five hundred points, less than fifty. It would actually be like forty-five, something like that. Um, but so essentially, you could focus on getting kills. There'd only be what ten. 10 kills each per team. And I've, I've had situations where I'd be able to see numbers like that, especially in this particularly gory pug match. So it, it, it could go that way. I, I'm, I'm more interested well, then, in like then again. strategies of holding one point and killing with the rest, like having your tank hold one point, your local or whatever, and then everyone else focus yeah. on killing. Well, and, and what I was going to say is actually leading into the, 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 the next buff um, this is actually kind of the counter to that. If you know the other team decides to go for both of the both of the ferocity buffs, yeah, um, you would want to then send somebody on to get the uh, meditation of stillness, yeah, um, that allows your team to get two points per cap point um, per pulse instead of one. So crazy, so crazy. So essentially, yeah, like if you 
get get, get to this commune point, and obviously yeah, all the same things apply. If you get interrupted by the enemy, you're fucked. Um, but having that commune point literally doubles the effectiveness of your cap points, and that is cool. Like I, I love the dynamics that could result from this, but I'm worried for how complicated this could get in terms of a victory method um, on this map. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly worried about, like, I, I guess it shouldn't really be a worry, but if you end up having a team that is very much outclassed by another team, they're going to stand no fucking chance because yeah. if that other team manages to grab, like, say, all of these buffs, <laughs> they win. Yeah, pretty much. Like, they're just flat out. They, mm-hmm. they can just face roll through the rest of it and they'll win. Yeah. But it's one to note that these buffs, unlike the ones in Niflheld, don't I don't believe they increase your stats in any way. They don't make you more powerful that I know of. It just gives you more of an incentive to um to kill or to to, to do certain them. things. Yeah, yeah. I but think I is, think a big thing though is is the location of them. Yeah. Um, because it's the the from a point perspective, it's really a, a lot based like Capricorn. Like there's two on the the mid, uh, mid left, mid right, and there's one on the the bottom. Uh, there's just none of them are underwater, thank God. Uh, <laughs> the two uh, claw point or claw buffs, the ones that give you plus two uh, killing people, yeah. are relatively close to each person's spawn on the bottom right, bottom left. Right. And then the stillness is basically in the center of the map. Yeah. And then I have seen, like again, this is just beta, but I've I've seen always a ton of fighting there. Yeah. Uh, especially when the buff is active. Exactly. And the important thing to know about that is there's these two. Uh, holes in the ground mm-hmm. by the buff, yeah, and it's very easy to get feared or or whatever into them. Mm-hmm. And if you fall in there, it's not actually fall to your death. It looks like it from above. Yeah, you end up falling underwater, and that's where you get to the fourth buff, the final one. Yes, and perhaps the, the coolest. Yeah, the, the coolest, coolest one. one. Yeah, I think. Um, when you get it, like you 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 can quickly get back on. There's like a uh, a, a plank bridge, uh, mm-hmm. so you're not underwater fighting. But uh, when it's up, most people will be going for it. And if you commune with it, all the points on the map go to your team. Yeah. So just to be clear, um, you fall down these holes. Obviously, there's also like a path to get down there, like a cave kind of path, um, which takes you down to this underwater section or underground section. So it's the only one I believe on the map. I think this is the only part. Yeah, the yeah, mm. of the whole map that was underground. Um, so essentially, so. it's a very it's a pretty small enclosed area. Um, you could easily see a large fight happening in that area. Uh, it, it is definitely large enough for a whole group of five v five to actually end up fighting there, which you shouldn't do. Like it's not worth it in that case. But in either 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 case, if one person communes with this node on that point, and it seems to have a longer timer than any of the others, just to be clear. Mm. Um, if you commune with that point, all the points on the map, so the actual capture points, are flipped to your team. So it doesn't matter who's holding whatever, oh. or if I didn't, even if they're neutral, I think I, they also become your teams, which is crazy. Yeah, what what it does is it resets them and then gives them all to your team. Yeah. Um, but also um, going back to the timer, um, it doesn't actually start up immediately. It, it'll, it'll only start up once the game has been running for a while, mm-hmm. um, and it only appears once per game. Oh, really? That I didn't know. I thought it was yeah. twice or like on, a, on a specific timer. So basically, like, you don't want to necessarily go for it immediately when it's come up, but it's a really good thing. Like, let's say if you are, um, if your team is behind yeah. and you just need a real quick comeback, mm-hmm. that's when you want to go after it. And and I guess to some extent, if you your team is ahead, you might want to go ahead and go after it just to yeah. make sure the other team can't get just it. Just to disable it for later. Yeah. And uh, I guess one other thing to explain with this is after you cap that, the only way out of that room is a stairwell that leads directly to the southern middle point, the gate. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I can see like a lot of people, like a, a fighting happening uh, on top of the, the middle buff, people fall down, and then half the fighting's up there, half the fighting's down by the gate. Yeah. It's kind of cool. I, I, I overall like this map much, much, much more than Capricorn. Um, whether it's as competitively viable as the three existing maps... I'm not certain yet because it is, it, yeah, it just comes down to um, at some point the victory, like the, the steps you have to take to attain victory become really complex because there is yeah. what, three forms of methods like I could think of it, at least at the top of my head, like in terms of team splits and like where you'd send who, when to, to be victorious on this map. And that's crazy, just like immediately. And I, and I don't even know what the counters would be. And that's why I'm not vocalizing it, because at some point just, it'll just become like a, a driveling mess of, hey, but you could do this, or he could do that. Like, I, 
It's kind of crazy. <laughs> this this map is well, exciting. I'm, actually, I'm, I'm inter- interested to see it because I'd actually, I, I would love to see you know maybe some of the um the you know pro teams um, yeah. face off in this because I feel like this really allows for some extremely diversified strategies yes. to occur that you Very don't see so. in the other maps. And just by design, you really can't see in the other maps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. This, this I, th- is I think it might maps. be the first map where a Mesmer portal might be viable. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, As a Mesmer, a Mesmer he's portal, excited. Say from that bottom to the top? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, that could be crazy, actually. But I don't know if that would be particularly useful. I, I would say put them between the um, the two, the two um, buff points well if you think about it if you you have like a two cap Mm -hmm. if you like if you have your your natural and then the gate and you see somebody like you know your team's making a push to your natural point yeah your objective is to push them into that like that well or something and and, like bottleneck them towards the gate yeah you can keep the the fighting focus there Mm. and does a mesmer just like nope we're getting these teammates back up here because we're going to get their natural that could be cool yeah anyway yeah so that's the new map um we can't really say much more than what we have. I think we've gone quite a bit into at least it's just under speculation. We will see how that develops. We're not certain if they'll it'll become like an actual PvP rotation map or what time frame we're looking at. If it does, but hey, it's it's interesting, exciting, and I encourage everyone to check it out. It's probably the, my favorite map at the moment, at least from what I've seen. But that's what, that's because I like convoluted, crazy new stuff. So whatever. Yeah. Um, and again, it is in beta, so subject to change. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so listen to this three months from now. Dungeon changes. Well, not map. only is it subject to change, um, but also they did say that if people don't like the map, then like they will only include it in the normal rotation if people seem to enjoy it. Yeah, which which is yet to be seen because us as like relatively casual players would have an entirely different reaction to this, I believe. Then yeah, the well, I mean, it, it's more so like it's nice to see them doing this. It's a shame they didn't maybe do that like. It's a shame this policy didn't exist prior to Capricorn, but <laughs> it, at least it's something going forward. Well, yeah, fucking Capricorn. I, I liked Capricorn for a while, but then I turned it. Anyway, um, so yes, we've got new changes to dungeons, uh, changes to legendary, um, like getting the components and so on and so forth. Um, new PvP map. Anything else aside from the obvious? Oh, you're missing something one? important. Guild halls. Anything else that happened aside from the obvious with this <laughs> patch? Um, there, there is a uh, an acre of updates for classes and whatnot. Uh, some oh, really? more than most. Ooh. Uh, well, professions, yeah. Oh, that's cool. And he's a warrior. That's always my first question because <laughs> I, I I swear warrior is pretty much good as it is. If you don't need to make many changes, I'm going to load it up. But aside from that, uh, I think we can move on to what this patch is really for, and that is straight up. Hey. This is in prep Lush. for um, the Lost Shores. So, New Barama. Are you excited yep. for Lost Shores? Hell yeah, I am, because I have a prediction that's going to be right, and if it's not right, I'm going to quit Guild Wars forever. So, set it up. So, g- give, give me what... So, so, let me... T- so, this is for people who... I guess it's like you would only really get it if you played the original Guild Wars, but I'll explain it to you. <laughs> so, in, in these notes, so, should I talk about Ascended Gear? Because it goes along with this. Uh, so no. You, someone want to talk about Ascended Gear? I, we, we're definitely no. gonna, we are definitely going to talk about Ascended Gear. Right? I think okay. you should set up the dungeon well, then, that it's related to. Alright, so, basically, they've added a dungeon. I know nothing about the dungeon itself, though. <laughs> I, just, I only have the speculation. Just give me everything you have, and I'll go from there. All right, so this dungeon, it's like new and stuff, and yep. like, um, it's Accurate. like infinite and shit, and it gets like harder. Okay, so I think a good uh, comparison. Wait, did you just say it's infinite? Yep. No, it's not. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it's. It, I, I it feel is. like it's just gonna get harder and harder until it's just simply impossible. But, yeah. um, I, I thought a good comparison was like the last stand mode in Dawn of War Two. Um, mm-hmm. I, I thought for what I heard, like the information that's been going down the. The grapevine is that a thing? The grapevine, yes. yeah, sure, yeah, that, grapevine. That, yeah. that is a saying um, people use. It's yeah, so it's it's like that, and they've added a bunch of new skills that will be in the dungeon. By bunch, I really just mean one. I don't know why I said bunch, but um, there's a new condition called agony, which you need to have special infused armor to be able to protect against, and uh, yeah, and they add they're gonna add more set. That's what they're gonna do. 
So your grand prediction that you were keeping secret from me before the podcast started was just that it's, you suspect there's more sad. They're gonna, they're gonna have more sad in this dungeon. I guarantee it. You know why? Because agony, agony man. It's called as, agony. As soon as I heard the word agony, I was like, oh shit, it begins. You know what? And and Shin Boy isn't here right now, but I like the second that update was shown, I messaged Shin Boy saying, okay, this dungeon, it's gonna have more sad. Because agony, spectral agony, infusion, <laughs> infused against spectral yeah, it's agony. Cl- it's cl- it is so clear. Well, I hope it is. I so hope. Clear. So, I mean, uh, I guess I for people for who didn't play Guild Wars Brilliant 1, lives. In, in brief, what, what are the uh, Morset or the Mersad and what's agony? So, in the original Guild Wars, basically the original Prophecies campaign, mm-hmm. the hidden gods basically behind for the majority of the campaign were these beings called the Morset. They mm-hmm. were like really powerful and they were dicks. They were walking fucking penises <laughs> because what they did was they inflicted a skill called um, spectral agony. And so I guess I'll make this more clear since it's different in Guild Wars. You had about like, how much health did you have? Uh, 400. Or so yeah, 400. And basically the skill took around a hundred health per second. Yeah. Unless armor was, was infused. It was instant death. Like, so the entire, was, like to sum up guild wars in a nutshell, um, the entire campaign revolves around, Hey, like a, a succession of multiple big enemies that you think yeah. are the greatest evil. Right. And it, it progresses to this point where, Hey, there's this, um, there's this seer in the mountains that if you go to him, he'll help you fight the Mursat. And you walk up to the seer and it is, Clearly, like this evil-looking thing with like with like <laughs> black giant. skin oh, <laughs> and shit, and he's like, "I will infuse your armor so you can fight the Mursat." And you're like, "Yeah, that's I a great idea." I, I mean, they look rude. like angels, but I probably want to kill them, right? And then you end up getting your armor infused, which unless you fight spectral agony because it makes you essentially immune to it, or it does like thirty damage a second as opposed to like a hundred damage a second. Um, and then you end up finding the Mursat aren't the bad guys. Like surprise, surprise. But anyway. I think that the entire, the cool thing about that is that that entire, like, chain of events made a lot of, some Guild Wars 1 players hate the Mursat, like, with a vengeance, but other ones, I like, do. me and Noob just absolutely love the Mursat as an enemy race. Because what? No, I don't. Really? I, I what love are you talking about? They're great. Did you not just hear how I said they were walking penises? Because I thought <laughs> I made that pretty clear. Um, the basically, coolest thing about and the said, worst part is, in the Guild Wars Beyond campaign, right? I'm doing the campaign, right? right? So I got my armor infused, blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I finished the campaign. More sad are gone. And then they add in like the Guild Wars Beyond extra content and then they bring more sad and Jade back. Yeah. And I have different armor now. It's not infused. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Spectral Agony kills people. So good. I love it. It's like agony. drunk driving kills people, except Spectral Agony kills even more people. So the changes to Warrior is just, just to step back a second here is just that they added <laughs> more combo finishes to our shit. And increases the responsiveness of one of my skills. I love reading it. They know. They know that Warrior is good as that. Um, Fuck that. Fuck so yeah. that. Fuck you, Arena. And they've also now started to do PvP only changes for like engineers and stuff, which is kind of crazy. But um, there's, there's so, so many here that I couldn't really comment on that until probably next. Do week. you guys think Spectral Agony is going to be as fucked up as it was in the original Guild Wars? Um, or Agony? So Whatever they want to uh, call it now. We should probably step it back a bit. So with Lost Shores, there's... um. There's, there's a couple of compound changes that are happening to Guild Wars 2. Now, this is a free update, and you'll be receiving this. You probably already received the patch, and you probably already played it. Well, it's it. only free for digital deluxe learners. Um, no, that's not the... God damn it, noob. They don't care about you. I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> to break your money. money. <laughs> Extra money. <laughs> how, much got, how much have you guys spent on this game so far, like money-wise? 20 bucks. Uh, including, including base costs? No. In- not- including base costs. Really? Okay, 80 um, bucks. So one hundred dollars. Base, cost? base was sixty. Yeah. Um, one time spent eighty. Yeah, eighty, eighty. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> three I months hope... in. Yeah, we're three months in. Three months in. Yeah. So sixty, seventy, ninety. Ninety. Yeah, that's not too bad. I do. So, I do yeah. ten a month. Yeah. So for someone who doesn't play this game that much, I've spent way too much fucking money on this game. <laughs> it's it's facts. <laughs> and guess what? I spent that twenty dollars on fucking costumes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, ju- just be like we told you. Just because the guy on PayPal is named the real ArenaNet isn't doesn't mean he's real. <laughs> Quit hey giving man. random people money. Okay, that's just 
I thought people would have honor in, in today's society. No. But apparently not. Just took my credit card information. What a piece of shit. Anyway, <sighs> so you've probably already received the um, the new patch. Uh, if you haven't, just boot your Guild Wars and you'll have it. Uh, but essentially, what's happening is there's a whole new expanse. We've talked about the previous weeks, uh, the actual island there. And there's been a bunch of announcements. Well, not really announcements, more like leaks about what that entails, including stuff like um, many things similar to what was described by Ara. So, for example, it's you're going to have to set up the beachhead and escort NPCs to set up camps and stuff like that to conquer this area, at least for this weekend. Um, and do, if you guys want to discuss that, I will. But beyond that, there's a new dungeon. Um, and that's probably the one of the two, those two that I'm excited about, uh, which will have, which is pretty much an infinite dungeon. And we'll talk about that in a second. And finally, there's going to be a new tier of skill, uh, sorry, gear uh, called Ascended Gear, which is a couple of skill points, sorry, a couple of attribute points above what you get at the moment in exotics, which is the current maximum, um, which are equivalent to legendaries currently. So legendary is going to be moved up to the ascended gear, which are going to be a little bit more powerful. We're talking about like 10% or so. Um, and so that's going to happen ret- retroactively. If anyone out there is crazy enough to have a legendary, don't worry because your stuff will be buffed. Um, and yeah, and currently, legend the new ascended gear tier is starting with accessories and probably going to move on to a full set in the future. Um, so those are the three major changes that are happening with Lost Shores: a new dungeon, new area, and new gear. I guess we could say that with. Uh, there's so, also there is there is going to be some new exotic gear that comes along with that dungeon as well. Right. Cool. Um, exotics who needs them when you have <laughs> so which one do you guys want to stop away. talking about first you guys want to talk about the ascended gear or the well, new dungeon? i actually had a question for you guys coming from guild wars one and, and your explanation of um the the potential connection between um the agony the, and this new dungeon yeah yep. and what you guys play in guild wars one um does this make you guys excited about what what is in this um no, what could you. potentially be in this Reading or do that. you feel like a, maybe a little worried that like arena that's already kind of going back to the well um if i was a believer that mursat are involved in this i would be very excited because they're a cool enemy um but as i said earlier like reactions to the mursat are mixed um some people love them some people hate them um from the original Guild well, Wars. I, I think people would love them to be back but they would hate them once they encounter them in the game it's like a really good enemy like something you love yeah. to hate right it's like yeah. something you like fighting yeah. Um, because they're jerks and you want to kill their asses. Uh, and, and they really, have sexual agony. They have a really <laughs> cool enemy design. Like They're probably cooler yes. still than anything in Guild Wars 2 that I can think of. Um, but yeah, so uh, that part is probably mixed. That, but I actually aren't, am not a believer that this is to do with the Mursat. <laughs> See, I, I, I know that I feel like they're per, like on purpose referencing the Mursat, yeah. but they're really just not going to They named it like that just to piss people off. Just well, to be like, yeah. hey guys, <laughs> to, to get people like coming, us excited. We're coming back. And, and it's like, ha, us down. Ha, fuck you. We added some rad people or something. So like that. with the new island, um, and if you've seen the trailer out there, you've seen the big new boss that we're probably going to fight this weekend. Um, there's a new race that have arisen from the depth of the sea. That's kind of like the central conceit of it, right? Um, I've forgotten what the name is. Thurb, can you help me with this one? I forgot that there's a crazy new name for this new Cor- race. Corkag or something? Yeah, so, some shit like this. I don't want to say pronunciation like that, is bad. Yeah, so like Corcat or something like that. But um, so there's there's sea creatures. If you've seen uh Cloverfield, that's essentially what you're getting with this. Um, so Monty- I guess we should yeah. preface for people who haven't actually seen a picture. They are not tentacle minioned sea creatures. There's something out of a hentai movie, right? What? They look like big Tentacles? crabs and shit. Not really crabs. Uh, I, I guess most people's initial thoughts before actually seeing any of the uh, artwork was mm-hmm. that it was going to be like minions of bubbles. Minions of bu- <laughs> oh yeah, like dragon stuff. Wasn't bubbles? Yeah, like the, 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 the bubbles is the the underwater community dragon. name for the dra- the underwater dragon who has the power yeah. to create tentacle minions. Right, and, but these are not those that we. Can They're see. like crab things. Yeah, yeah. Like if you've seen Borderlands two, um, like the the spider things i forgot what they're called like spider crabs or whatever um so they remind me a lot of those um or spider ants or something like that the big spider looking things anyway uh but yeah so th- that's like the central new enemy that's arisen and that's what you're fighting with this and they take over lion's arch or some shit, crap like that i think that a big boss amongst them is assault, gonna assault <laughs> lion's arch this weekend and we're gonna fight him off um but that is where i think agony is gonna come from 
I think it's going to be related related to this new race rather than um, the actual Mursat. Because, well, Agony is kind of here and there because they made a big um, statement that they've added, they're adding a new condition to the game, Agony, right? It's going to be a new condition that is not removable, like you cannot cure yourself from it. And it's going to be only affected by, it's only going to be placed upon you by a certain group of enemies. And I don't believe they've actually specifically said that it's related to the Corket or one of the new races. Um, and it's going to be only fightable using a new tier of gear, the Ascended gear. Um so it's all kind of linked, right? I'm not. I'm not really sure. I, I, I think it's going to be related to this new race rather than Mursat because I don't think Arena is cool enough to bring back the Mursat. <laughs> I think they're just trolling us. I guarantee they're trolling us. <laughs> but but I'm going to be right because, um, yeah, I'm right because let's be honest. All of the stuff Arena has impl- implemented in this game so far has been from our podcast and specifically <laughs> my opinions. Yeah, and you know it's. It, I think it's pretty much fact that they're just taking my ideas uh-huh. after they took my money so, so after you- <laughs> I purchased the Delusional Deluxe Edition. <laughs> so they took in, they've taken everything. What do I have now? I live in a park now at this point. <laughs> they've taken everything. I won't. <sighs> <laughs> so um, <sighs> it's kind of hard to discuss because the two items are linked. So Agony is going to be that, that new unremovable condition. But that is only, only going to appear, at least from what they've said so far, unless I'm deeply mistaken, in the new dungeon, right? Like, uh, that's where you're going to find Agony? Is that right? I think uh, so. In the new dungeon, yeah. yeah. I believe yeah, for that, starters, that's, yeah, it's, it's only going to appear like, there. Specifically, yeah. That's, that's the first place they're going to get in. Yeah, and but the new dungeon, from what I've seen, has nothing to do with this new race. I, at least I haven't seen it that way at all. I Wait, I have a question. Really much of anything about the new dungeon? It's it's, a, it's the lost shores now, right? But once we yeah. find it, is it still the lost shore? The new dungeon? Wouldn't it be the found shore? No. <laughs> Fuck you. Like just. <laughs> <laughs> um, the new dungeon is going to be found through a teleporter, a new Asura gate in Lion's Arch, which is going to take you directly there. Um, There's a lot of being built. It's, of course, these like I think everyone expected yet, these Lion Arch or the Lion's Arch teleporters were taking up people to new places mm, in the yeah. game. Yeah, so the cool thing is with that is that the new dungeon is going to work with the world versus world scaling system. So if someone of any level can participate in it, um, that's one element of it. The new dungeon is going to be composed of like, so you enter it and then there's going to be a series of mini dungeons within that. So how it works is there's a central, like a beachhead, essentially landing ground. And from there you step out into the new dungeon um, that's going to take you through three mini areas and then back you, back to the central area. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, exploring a new expanse because they call it, like, what was it, the Fractals? Like the actual dungeon mm-hmm. itself is something to do with the Fractals. I forgot what the name of the dungeon is. Fractals of the Mists. Yeah, Fractals of the Mists. So it's it's kind of like the idea behind it is the, the Asura researchers are investigating the Mists, I think. Um, and you, you as a party of like intrepid adventurers are going to be exploring the mist because th- it's being distilled down to these fractals and how I picture fractals are very much like PVP maps. Like, cause that, that is kind of like the same idea you get from them. So how they described to us is that they're going to be like small maps, um, which are based upon great events from the original Guild Wars, as well as stuff you haven't seen before. And that's going to be the entire conceit of the dungeon. So you start off at the beachhead, you go through the portal or whatever to a series of three randomized fractals. And each fractal is going to be like some crazy thing that from the original Guild Wars or whatever. Then you're going to progress to the next fractal, which is going to be something entirely different. And then the next, and then back to the original landing head. Um, so it's this kind of interesting way of approaching a dungeon because obviously if people have out there have done an explorable dungeon in the past, this is entirely new. This is nothing like what they've done before. An explorable dungeon is usually a, a single continuous adventure that takes you through a large pre-existing area. Then you finish it by completing the final boss, which is an entirely different place. There's, not, there's no like circular kind of route through it like this is doing, which is cool in and of itself. Um, feel free to stop me at any time if you have anything like in terms of questions or a discussion point. So that's, that's like the central conceit of how this dungeon is going to work. You're going to be going through these fractals. Um, but this is where agony comes in. And I don't know if they've intrinsically linked the or progression to these fractals to agony itself, because they make it sound like it's a, um, a native element of the maps themselves and not enemies, which is kind of weird because when they first announced agony, I thought it was linked to enemies. 
Um, but in these new discussions of how the fractal is going to work, it makes it sound like Agony is part of the maps itself. So essentially, as you progress through this dungeon, you do that loop of three, then back to the central area. Um, each time you do that loop, you're considered to have completed the dungeon once, I believe. It, stop me if I'm horribly wrong. Um, and each time you complete that loop, it's going to get harder and harder. So you do a loop of three, like randomized. We don't know how big the pool is. So there might be like 15 maps or maybe... I think, I think there's nine. Nine at the moment? I remember hearing nine somewhere. Yeah, so there's going to be nine pools of which you get three randomized maps. And every time you complete that loop, it's going to get harder and harder. And that's why it's going to be called the Infinite Dungeon. Because your rewards are going to increase every time you do that loop. Um, but also, like obviously, the enemy is going to get harder itself. And finally, and this is where the new gear comes in, um, Agony is going to increase as you delve deeper into the dungeon. And that's the part that's right. weird. So well, and you said that like the, your rewards get better and better as you go on, but I think more specifically, like other dungeons in the game, you don't receive your reward for that um, round of of um, that fractals loop. or whatever yeah. until you've finished all of them. I I, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Like you, you finish your loop. So like, let's say you've gone through like three times and you're on your fourth time, and you only get about halfway through on your fourth, and that's as far as you can make it. You won't get any. Really? rewards for that fourth time i i would oh, think so i mean the fourth time, assuming this maybe. follows through yeah like you would get the pre- previous three because you'd finish those yeah i imagine you're getting re- your rewards from as you go yeah um but yeah given how they've, they've changed it where you get all your rewards at the end now um i would imagine it would follow through with that as well yeah because like there's been yeah it just, it just there's so much to talk about because the dungeon itself because it's open to any level of um of people entering it how it's going to work is it's going to have a base difficulty based upon the levels, the maximum level obtained by any character who's entered that dungeon. So, for example, if you're entering with one level one, one level 60, one level 80, and then like whatever else between those, um, the dungeon will be based off the difficulty of the 80, I believe. Uh, that, that's how it makes it sound. Am I wrong here? Like Thurbs? I, I need someone uh, I, to. I, I believe reading something similar to that, yeah. With yeah. The, it's, 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 it's actually it's meant for geared 80s but you yeah. can do it at a lower level yeah they made it sound like if you go in with a bunch of lower levels then the maximum level characters who's based off like, so i guess the one thing we we don't know is how quickly it scales up to being good lord this is impossible yeah right so like five runs in or is it the second yeah it's, it's going to be like based upon like multiple factors um because so that's what that's one element that, that contributes to the difficulty so the maximum level of your party um, the second element that, that contributes to the difficulty is that it will remember the individual progress through those fractals of each of the per- like your account. So when it looks at your party, it will remember the um, each person's maximum fractal depth or how many times you've gone through that loop. Um, and then I think that this is going to call that a level. So for example, if you go through the, the loop six times, you're considered as if you've gone your level six in that dungeon. Um, so if you only have like one level one, level one, level two, one, level three, one, level four, level one, level six, um, it's actually going to limit the difficulty of the entire fractal loop to the lowest level as opposed to the highest. So your lowest, the person's only done it once will be limiting the other guys who are going to that. So the, your, your, the next loop you go through that fractals, uh, is going to be level two or whatever it is, like the equivalency for his level. Um, so that's the second element that decides the difficulty of the dungeon. The third element that decides the difficulty of the dungeon is that lowest level of fractal depth in terms of um, that will judge how much agony you experienced whilst going through the fractals. So if you're doing a level one version of the dungeon, then you're not going to be experiencing much in the way of agony. But if you're doing like level six or whatever, 10, um, go through that dungeon, then there's going to be a large amount of agony exposed to your party. So it's quite complex if you think about it. So you have a, yeah. yeah, but I guess you can kind of distill it down to, hey, this dungeon is going to be more difficult depending on how experienced your party is. The difficulty is going to be reflecting how much agony you're going to experience and how difficult the actual enemy themselves are going to be. I don't think that's going to affect what fractals you experience in your way through. I think those are supposed to be randomized just to make it interesting. Um, so that's pretty shit. It's going to be an infinite dungeon, which is going to get infinitely more difficult, assuming or how an X amount more difficult the more you do it, which is kind of cool, I guess. Um, but the yeah. I, I, I was going to point out real quick. I, I don't mean to rain on the par- the parade of how awesome this thing sounds, um, I, but I, I believe actually, there is at least one underwater map. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard rumors of that, but was hoping not. Um, well, for me, it's the fact that one of these fractals is going to have a jumping puzzle as part of it. And <laughs> God damn it, man. I can take, I like underwater. I do not like jumping puzzles. Um, yeah, so. Oh, and for anybody who is wondering, yes, there is a gift of ascension for the fractal dungeon. Because you get like little fractals for every time you finish, fractal relics for every time you finish it. Yeah. And apparently the vendor is already selling a gift of ascension for 500. Wait, so what? Yeah. I don't know what a gift well, of ascension is. Just a. Uh, well, uh, gifts of anything usually result in, like, for needed for legendaries. Okay. So, wait. So, it's only 500 tokens for this uh, gift? I thought it was, like, 2,000 for the others. Wasn't it? Uh, no, most most gifts are 500. Like, the gift okay. of battle is 500 badges of honor. Gift of, uh, like, whatever the one for Ascalon is. Right. Each dungeon has one. Okay. Tears of uh, whatever. Yeah, you need 500 of those. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get... So there's a new legendary, essentially. They have essentially announced a new legendary, at least one. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's They have all the necessary prereqs, probably, for a legendary. You just have to put it together in the forge to find it. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So you have this... I, I guess the final talking point about the dungeon is, aside from its structure... Um, is the Agony part, and how that works is as you get higher in levels in the dungeon, Agony's going to increase, whether that's by enemies or the, the native nature of the dungeon itself, um, and Agony's only reducible by Ascended Gear. Um, so with all that that huge info dump I just did, which part do you guys want to talk about? Because I, I actually think the, the structure of the dungeon is pretty interesting as a first talking point, because I don't want to get to the mm. negative yet. <laughs> yeah, like the structure definitely is interesting because, I mean, it... it it encourages replayability probably more than any of the others. Yeah. Uh, just because you you keep making more and more progress, especially as you gain more um, infused gear and can then move further and further and further into it. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much the idea. And, well, it's, it's kind of cool because I assuming that they will expand upon this by adding more fractals as time goes on. Like, do you guys think that's that's possible? Because currently the pool is nine. You do three per loop. Yeah. I can see them going, hey, we've added new... Right, this could be like the thing that they constantly update. Yeah. It's like the the very meta kind of thing. Yeah. They kind of become its own separate thing. Like there's... Yeah. There's it's dungeon like, oh, let's go to Lost Shore to do thing. the updated new thing. It's like the TF2 of Guild Wars 2 dungeon. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. well, like I said, it's kind of its own other mode. It's almost like this right. like... Horde mode of of Guild Wars yeah. Two or something. So it's it's, pre- it's very much like that because it's it's kind of cool that you're doing dungeon runs within that dungeon because every time you to return to that central area, it's it says like in there like it's to return to rest and recuperate or whatever. Um, so I, I assume your, your party's gonna be fully healed and shit once you get back to the central area. There might be a repair guy. There might even be a merchant. You never know. Um, which which should be awesome. And, and then you do those loops, and hopefully those are in- entertaining in themselves. Um, the idea of a loop being contained into like a very small, like three small dungeons is kind of cool. Especially if, they, if they're like Guild Wars 1 events referencing. That could be awesome. Um, because it's got, like the entire conceit of this being in the mist is that they can do stuff like reference back to the Great Wall falling, for example. Or... Um, the shining blade and stuff like that, like the mantle, the white mantle could be part of. They could come back in this, which is, I guess, kind of cool. Like, noob, would you be interested if there was like explicit references to the Fresco Wars in this dungeon? Yes, just for the sake of like, oh man, that's pretty cool, kind of thing. <laughs> like, I might, I may be just swearing at arena net developers, maybe trying to build a bomb to send to their home because, you know, spectral agony. But yep. just for the sake of seeing more of the original Guild Wars, it's just like, I mean, nostalgic kind of thing. Not for nothing, but it would fit pretty well to do the last fight in. Uh, what was it? Prophecy, because I mean, you have spectral armor, right? It's it's a fractal in in time, effectively. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So they could just be like, hey, let's just redo all of our final bosses from the last game. No, yeah. Th- I yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also, um, every second time you go through the loop, you fight a fractal boss. I forgot about that. Um, the fractal boss is going to be reflective of the world bosses in Guild Wars Two. So I assume that you'll be fighting the giant, for example. Um and the big worm and hopefully the fire elemental will be in there. What do you guys think of that? 
so is that worry or excitement <laughs> um it's uh, i i think it's it should be fine it's just gonna be like you know a really long fight sort of thing yeah um uh, right. well i, 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 I really hope be mini versions of these rather than the actually the full-sized i hope so anyway because yeah. then it'll take like an hour if it, <laughs> it was like the full fire metal <laughs> fight um yeah, because like fighting the five five manning the shatter is probably possible. It would just take forever. Yeah. Oh, that'd right. be cool if there's yeah. dragon fights in there as well. I guess maybe. I don't know. Depends how it's presented. Well, it's, it, it's the, through their video they've hinted like a the, there's uh, a giant serpent like thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your face. That that's probably one of the giant bosses. Right. Uh, so and then the, the, cool. there's there's a they, they released a video and also like this chained astral giant right. that is probably going to end up being a boss as well but um i don't know i i think it's going to be okay uh so long as the, it's it's bosses that are like you know like last week we talked about gigantic lupicus yep those sorts of big fights take forever uh high chance of, of dying but are still pretty fun right uh right. But yeah if it's just like very easy bosses that just have a huge health pool mm-hmm. those will probably not be fun <laughs> yeah Exactly. Like the world bosses, at least to some extent. Yeah. Um, but and this the idea of increasing rewards as you go through, but increasing agony as you go through. Like, is that interesting to you guys? Do you guys see yourself being part of a group that that delves deeper into this dungeon to get those big loot stuff mm-hmm. drops, etc.? If I have the time, sure. Because I have no I idea. It's what, a good. Like, method it's it's a good gating mechanic. Uh, to sort of like you know to keep the hardcore uh, pve ears happy and all that one thing that worries me is uh maybe like you know it's this might not be a problem right away but uh people who want to get like uh, maybe there's only certain rewards 20 you know runs into it and uh, in, unless people have to like set aside how long like how long will it take to get there is it gonna take well, like five hours of, of dungeon before you get to that point yeah but I, I think well it's it's kind of it kind of leads me to my main misgivings with the new format so the fact that it'll remember your progress the next time you go in is kind of cool for those guys who have like a set dungeon group and they all know that they're going to be like level 11 so you walk in and you start at level 11 and then you can keep going deeper and deeper into the fractals right um which is cool, I guess. The problem is... It's something for all ages, I mean, levels. On the one side, I think that's cool, but on the other side, you, you're going to get to a point where you're just constantly banging your head against the wall. That's true as well. Unless um, you go in with new people. And that's that's kind of where like the, the positive and negative comes in. Because, um, sure, like, yeah, if, if it gets to the point where it's so difficult that it's going to be like CM, explorable mode, where there's a room of enemies that are just unkillable, um that i assume won't be fun for those guys i know there's some people out there who find that fun but i don't um that could be one thing but my main worry is like hey we're up to level 11 as a group we're not going to take you along because you're only at level two therefore like you're wasting all of our time etc like people not just like exclusions well happening banging your head against the wall i don't think it's quite going to be the problem though because um when you go in um there is a basis for uh, the the member with the least progress, like you like you said. Yeah. Um, but you can actually set the difficulty scale based on that person. I think what that basically yeah. means is like you can't go higher than what that person did. Yeah. But you can definitely drop it lower to to make some some progress through rather than beating your head against something that you're not able to actually complete, just so that you can try to get some more of those drops and maybe get some more of that infused gear um, to be able to eventually move I on. I assume so. Like, I, okay. I have no idea if there's like an actual like. Dialogue option or whatever to choose your level. No, there there is there like, is straight up there is a there is a thing that comes up that lets you select your difficulty scale um, level. Oh, cool! Oh, okay, yeah, that that kind of that and it even lets you know what your maximum party difficulty um, is available is. So, so Thurb's problem won't be in effect to a large extent because that you won't get to a point where you'll be banging up your your head against a wall. But my problem will yeah. still be a problem because guys who get left behind are going to get even more left behind with the system. Wouldn't they? 
Because like if if you're, um, it all depends on the group they're running with, I guess. Like if they're running with people who are like super hardcore exclusionary, then yeah, probably. But I feel like that's already kind of the case, um, even now, because you already have people who are running their. I mean, Shinboy's talked about it before with his group. Like, not to say that he's exclusionary, but he does like when they're doing their super serious rating or dungeon running. Um, he only will bring certain people with him. So I mean, yeah. like, I don't think this is going to change anything really. Like that already exists in the game. If it's going to exist, right? And it'd be cool to see if pogs become a bigger thing because it's accessible by anyone, and it's at, in Lion's Arch. So it's not like you have to trek there or find that place in the map. Um, I, I think there'll be more people doing this than most other dungeons, especially given that the drops that you that we're hearing about from this dungeon seem to be better. Like, f- like straight up having getting tokens towards ascended gear is inf- is actually legitimately better than any other dungeon you could be running at the moment. This is the dungeon to do if you're going to get tokens from doing it. I, 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 well, to some extent. Good. I mean, the ascended gear is, you know, two pieces right now. Uh, it's rings and a back piece, right? Yeah. So, so, so yeah. Is that Three rings and earrings and back piece? Or is it just rings and back piece? I think it's a whole I believe it's set. just rings and back piece. I I I I just used to be surprised if it wasn't the whole set of accessories. I, I bet you can get all six accessories from this. Because if it's just rings, that means you can only have two accessories and a back piece that'll be changed by this dungeon. And that's not much to aspire towards, is it? Mm, well, there is one. Th- Actually, no, maybe not. Never mind. I mean, it all depends because, like, this is kind of the introduction of this new system into the game. They said that you know further. Um, updates will have will expand more on the ascended gear and everything so i mean you can imagine that like this is basically this is here to introduce us to this kind of endless uh dungeon introduce us to you know agony introduce us to ascended gear and then you know maybe i mean we we already know there's gonna be another update next month maybe that's the update where they add you know some more ascension gear then right yeah they've said that um, they're aiming for towards a place where you'd eventually be able to get a whole set, um, top to bottom, yeah. armor included, of ascended gear. Um, so I guess there's a point to start talking about my biggest misgiving with this weekend's content. Hey guys, let's talk about ascended gear. Woo! Yay! So this is the gear that's only accessible if you've uh, um, purchased the digital deluxe, and I'm yeah, not yep, going to drop it. Exactly. Fuck you. I'm, I refuse to drop this because I lost $20, and it took me this long for me to realize that I have lost $20. <laughs> so Forever. Is, this $20 gear, is never coming back to um, me. is the way you fight agony, as we talked about before, um, because how it works, essentially, you have your new gear. It has... Um, the what would previously be the upgrade slot built into it so you'd find that you don't need to put in a um, red pearl or whatever it is to give yourself a full set of berserkers if you're getting a berserkers set off this new gear it'll be built in so you have the first set of stats and then you have a second set of stats um which is kind of weird if you think about it i don't know why they list it that way do they do this that way i think they do pretty sure anyway um, so now you just have like a, hu- a huge set of stats on this gear. That's first and foremost. And also you have that 10% um, increase over current exotics in terms of power of this gear. So we are getting a new level of top gear into the game. Um, but finally, you have an infusion slot. So you have your gear, and instead of having a normal upgrade slot, you have an infusion slot, which you put these new upgrade components into, which will, and these upgrade components will give you agony resistance. Is there anything else it does? Like, like um, it look. I think it's pretty looking. It's like specific name sets, if, if I recall correctly. What do you mean? Um, for example, the ring ascended gear I saw was Yakington's ring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was cool. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> these gears, so Yakington's, if I recall correctly, was actually in the Guild Wars Two wiki as a specific set, but it seemed like no one had actually gotten it. Right. I was wondering, hey, what what does this look like? And I guess it is um, something completely different. And but the, I, it's important. I'm to note hoping that- they're all sets. Yes, like name well, sets. Th- that would be pretty cool. But, but you, you, you were asking though, Cynic, like if there was anything different that these infusions did. Yeah, because it sounds like the, the infusions are. It sounds like there slot. is. Yeah, because no, well, that's, yeah, that's they're, what they're the original Guild Wars infusions were. They they're introducing specifically three different kinds of infusions um, yeah. for right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the offensive, the defensive, and the omni. Right. Exactly. Um, 
So it sounds like the infusions do something, right? Because some people have the mis like, okay, so ascended gear is going to be something we have to talk about in terms of the idea behind introducing a new top tier of gear, right? But aside from that, like this, the, this, um, the infusion slot itself, some people think that it's only going to be there for putting in stuff that gives you resistance to agony. I strongly don't think that's the case because it, from what they've said, it sounds like there's going to be like more stats associated with the new upgrade component, right? Yeah, well, it sounds like maybe like for right now, uh, maybe all that they're going to be introducing is agony related stuff. Yeah. This idea of the infusions is something they're going to build on with, with future updates. Right. So what do you guys think of infusion? Like the not infusion, sorry. What do you guys think of Ascended Gear? Durin, we had a discussion about this when this was announced earlier this week on Skype. Yeah. I've forgotten where you fall on it because a huge hubbub was was raised when they yeah. announced this. I I mean, like, I guess, like, I don't, I don't hate that they're doing it. Um, it's it's in it, it it's potentially an interesting idea that I think is just very much in its infancy, so we don't really know how far they're they're actually maybe planning on going with it. Right. Um, but I think where a lot of that hubbub came from was just the I mean the sheer fact that they're basically kind of going against what they uh, against the horizontal uh, progression that they claimed um, Guild Wars Two would yeah. be from the beginning. Sure. But you say you start seeing blog posts of hey Arena is going back on what they said. They've like given up on their original like yeah people, people were kind of mad yeah like they, they people posted like that the timestamp from the Guild Wars manifesto that video they they released like earlier last yeah. year um, with them saying hey there's not going to be any more this, it's going to be horizontal progression like that's essentially what they're saying in the video um, and like the straight up like well I've- and people have straight up like put in hours and hours and hours getting a full set of exotic gear and now I mean it's yeah. saying that hey there's a new tier of gear out there and your shit's right. all invalidated. That, that's kind yeah, of pretty um, much. I mean, for right now, not all of it is because it is just those those um, you know jewelry and back pieces. Yeah. But we already know that eventually all of it will be like eventually yes. you're not going to be going for exotics anymore. You're going to be going for ascended. Yeah. And while I, I'm hearing that there have been some some arena dev devs have, who have gone out and said like, hey, this is the only time we're doing this. <laughs> um, well, okay, so we'll until see. the next. But next at the same time, like. Bench. I think I think people are, are kind of you know somewhat right, if not maybe you know a little entitled, um, to be so upset about this because, like, people don't want this to be another wow. They don't want to like right. you don't come to Guild Wars two for fucking you know gear progression. You don't want to have to to worry about that like you know six months from now all of your gear is fucking invalid and now you got to go good through luck and grind playing for through the game gear. again. So I think the term being thrown around was power creep. And as a person who doesn't isn't um, familiar with WoW, can you explain to me what that was, what it did to WoW, and like how, what the the history is behind what Arena's doing now? Um, I'm not actually familiar with that term, right? Um, mostly because yeah. I never got super crazy into it. But I, I think that's, I think that's a, that idea basically of um, the the biggest flaw or one of the biggest flaws with horizontal or with uh, vertical progression is that. Um, eventually it gets to a point where, um, like numbers get inflated to a, a point of kind of r- ridiculousness. <laughs> uh, but okay. So, so third link, the, the, um, <laughs> the definition for power creep. I just looked it up um, on so, Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically I guess I'll explain it quickly because I, you know, I played WoW for years and I didn't know what this term was either. So maybe some out there don't either. Um, you pretty but much it's basically gradual, nail, yeah, hammer of the nail or whatever. It's, yeah, it's, it's basically gradual unbalancing of a game due to the successive releases of new content. Um, and it's like, it caused by a number of different factors and extreme cases can damage, be damaging to the longevity of the game. Obviously, that didn't happen with WoW, but it can because it's that same idea of, you know, six months from now, all my fucking gear is invalid. Now I got to go get a whole new gear. And then with those gear, like, then, the, you know, they're, they're, this gear has you know, X number high, higher of these stats. And then that can cause some, some um, imbalance as well. And then in, 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 you know, wow, it got even, even more complicated and, and Guild Wars is treading on this a bit when they started introducing even more stats. Yeah. So then you got like, you got higher stats, but then you're also introducing new stats that you now need to balance the game around. 
And that causes even more imbalances where it, where maybe balance was kind of where it should have been before. And it just kind of creates a, a, a balanced mess where your, um, your, your patch notes are, you know, like are, are what blizzards are where it's just pages of class changes where they're, they're constantly turning and tweaking knobs with these classes, trying to balance them. Right. Because right. they're just they're trying to balance against so many factors, and those factors are constantly changing. Yeah, and but beyond that, like just to, in like human terms, time is being wasted. Like people are worried that if they are going to be out there investing in this new set of set of gear, they're worried that there's going to be ascended two point like one year down the track, and you you'd have to get that right. <laughs> um, right. So it, it's it's weird because to some extent. I, I really didn't expect this to happen. Like, I really d- thought that, hey, they're going to stick with it. Exotics are going to be the maximum. Um, and the fact, like, when you said to me that some arena deads went out there and said, hey, this is the only time we're going to do this, and so on and so forth, I actually believe that. But that's because I think that ArenaNet made this change and introduced um, Ascended Gear with the, like, just, like, not knowing what would happen. I, I, I sincerely think they did not think it would be this like big. Like they knew that some people would be angry because that's anytime you change anything, people get angry. But um mm-hmm. like just the the sheer amount of backlash that came from this probably factored into their expectations of whether they're gonna introduce like a bigger a higher tier of gear later. Like I, I can definitely see them going, okay, we tried that. Uh let's not do that again guys. Let's let's just stick with this. Let's just let's just stay here, yeah. shall we? Well, and, and and like I said, it's it's you know to some extent, it, it's okay for people to, to have reacted the way they did because this this announcement of of the ascended gear is is basically kind of ArenaNet doubling back on one of the key selling points for a lot of people for yeah. Guild Wars Two. Yeah, pretty much. Like straight up, horizontal progression was became a term. Really, it became a largely yeah. accepted term. When, like, obviously a bunch of free-to-play games have been doing it for a while now, but Gear Wars 2 being the largest MMO, to my recent knowledge, to really stick their, like, hang their whatever, I am really bad at these, terrible, anyway, um, hang, their, hang, their hang their hats on horizontal progression. Like, this is kind well, of... Well, even, even beyond a term, um, I think it became kind of an unofficial bullet point yeah, for definitely. this game. Yeah, definitely. Um so, so I guess, I guess the one thing that has everyone worried, and one thing we just need to remember, is the way to get these ascended items. Anybody at any level, with the exception of level one, you to level two, yeah. can get access to this dungeon that gets it. I guess the one worry everyone has is how difficult will it be to get these ascended gear yeah. versus just doing the dungeon at a higher difficulty for fun. So, Thurbs. What was your reaction to Ascended Gear? Did you... Uh, As someone who's still trying to climb up the dune to get a full exotic set... Oh, wow, really? Knowing that knowing Jeez. that there is another dune past that, I have to start climbing again. <laughs> right. I am vexed. It is vexing. <laughs> I it am vexed. It feels like they've almost invalidated the point of exotics. Yes. Because I'm assuming, like, if it's a halfway point, it's probably closer to exotic than it is to legendary in terms of like well, how far it's going to be. No, away. legendaries are going to be ascended. That, that's their current set. Um, looking at the base stats, so people don't out, know. Out no, no, there. no. I mean, like in in difficulty to obtain. Oh, like right. It's going to be yes. closer to absolutely. exotic. Oh, okay. So um, at this point, yeah. like, why the hell are you going to even go bother for exotic when you can just go for what is it called? Um, ascended. ascended. Yeah, and they've almost developed. I, mean, I wonder if that's maybe. I wonder if that's maybe why they're introducing it the way they are. Where it's like, well, right now we're introducing jewelry and back piece, and then maybe with the next update they'll just say, well, now we're introducing pants and shoulders. Right, and I the think, next one will be you know it, basically they're just kind of slowly putting it out there so that for the time being, at least until the full set is available, mm-hmm. there's still reason to get that exotic gear because it's going to make it easier right. to get that. Ascended and gear. as that's well, I think it. I think they're going to go for um, ascended as Eve. Like pretty hard to get. Like exotic, you're definitely going to want to get exotic first. And once you've had exotic for a bit, it's going to come before legendary. But at the same time, it is still a sizable distance away. So you're saying and it's going to be like um, stopping at greens is at the moment. Like people stop at green and then skip yellow to a large extent and get right. exotic. Like, it- right. They don't want that happening. So right. they're probably going to. 
put exotics or ascended a lot further away. Um, but at the same time, it's not legendary level. So I, I don't think they want to screw up exotics because it's kind of weird because fuck. so they've, they've announced that um, they want to release, they want to have exotics with infusion slots. So maybe that does um, lend weight to your argument because for example, if you, you know, if only um, ascended gear has infusion slots, then you need that to get deep into the fractal dungeon. Right. Um, right. But if they actually start back, like backdating it and going, hey, some exotics have infusion slots, so be able to get that tier of item with infusions and therefore go deeper into the fractal, like um, fractals of the mists, then yeah, I, I can see your argument being valid to some extent. Um, but at the same time, like they've also said that you can get this ascended gear, as Thurbleton said, by completing this dungeon. So yeah, it, it's it's almost like democratizing the highest level of gear, which is weird. To uh... some well, and then something else to, to remember is it's going to have like a marginal effect on like if you do uh, what was it seven at, or seven out of the like ten dungeons or whatever mm-hmm. or six out of the eight because you're going to get scaled down in level and so I'm going to be like you know one percent different from the other like you know if I'm in all exotics and he's in all ascended yeah. we're going to be slightly different at level thirty five right. right it's not going to affect structured PvP because it's a whole different gear uh, gear yeah. thing yep. Yeah. And world, in world versus world, world versus how often are you in a 1v1 in world versus world? You shouldn't be. You sh- if yeah. you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> God damn it. At least that's how I used to play world versus world. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, I'm yeah. not too worried about any of that. Um, yeah, that's, that's definitely true. Like, it's, but I, like, do you guys not like Ascended Gear? Just you think it's a bad idea or do you like it so overall, the concept of it? I think the that- concept of it I'm okay with. Yeah, this, I think it has the potential I, I think to be a bad idea. A really empty area that I actually well, think is a good idea because for someone like me who it's going to be really hard to attain legendary. Like mm-hmm. I don't even see it as a goal. Yeah, but same. a full set of a full set of exo- or ascended is completely a possible goal. Like that's something I can actually work towards. And for people who don't play as often and don't expect to ever get legendaries, um, ascended is definitely a more workable goal compared to legendaries. My I, worry, I guess my worry is... is oh, go ahead, uh, Tinek. Uh, well, mine might like, take us in a different direction. So what's yours? Uh, mine was just like, what, what is the focus of Arena going to be for future development? Are they going to put exotics, just throw them like, on the table, and just keep focusing on making new Ascended gear and new uh, 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 artwork for that? Because if there's only one set of Ascended, right. I'm more or less okay with it because we're just going to get that and then keep striving for exotics and dungeons and all that for the cosmetic reward. Right. I then just backtrack and use um, transmutation things from the gem store. <laughs> uh, wink, wink. Um, I don't know be- because it, yeah. they make it sound like it's hard to say at this point because they haven't released too much in terms of just in general discussion about ascended gear. Um, when they when they first posted their big announcement about ascended gear, and I, I feel really sorry for the chick who did it because. Um, she became like I, I've forgotten her name, but she became like the banner girl for this new like <laughs> inverted commas downward ten trend for Guild Wars Two. Um, <laughs> Doc, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So what a whore! Oh, I hate that. <laughs> like straight up, people were calling her out in the forums and like just just lay, laying it all at her feet. Um, it's her fault. She designed all of this. All well, of it. She didn't design some of it, but yeah. Anyway, so I think that they strongly intend for their like to have a tier of items as ascended. And I bet there's going to be multiple armor sets at that level um, with exotic being like a level below that. I actually do think they're going to roll this out and be like a full tier of gear. You're never going to be able to, in my opinion, like kill a monster and get an ascended gear, like ascended, a piece of ascended armor, for example. I don't. I think they'll stop it there. I think you'll always have to work towards getting something, like either by tokens or by like um, Mystic Forge recipes or whatever that's the case to get ascended. And I think that's kind of the differentiator there, right? Because exotic, you can. There's so many ways of getting exotic. You can craft exotics. You can Mystic Forge exotics. You can find exotics. Um, like str- like straight up, like, and you can get them by tokens. Like, what's the prestige of having exotic gear aside from knowing that you have the highest stats in the game? It's it's kind of impactful that they do have a, a prestigious level of gear right like, isn't that kind of I, I think that's the idea of why they introduced this new set to some extent not to apologize for them because i think it's 
as a person who just got a full set of exotic gear, I'm not particularly happy that one, like, no. six months down the line, I'm going to have to but, wait. But to... for someone like me with a full set of rare and no <laughs> prospects for legendary, like, that's, that's great. This is yeah, great news. Exactly. That. Well, and, and like you mentioned early, earlier, Cynic, like, one worry is the fact that, like, in order to get the ascended gear, like, you have to run um, the, yeah. the, the fractal dungeon. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's true for right now. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I believe they even said, like, you know, dungeons going forward will have legendary ge- – or, sorry, legendary um, – ascended gear. Um, w- the worry is I really hope that they, before long, um, you know, once they've kind of expanded uh, the the ascended gear library, I guess, um, mm-hmm. is that they go back and retroactively add that stuff to the current uh, dungeon right. list. Because be. otherwise – those dungeons are going to be mostly obsolete. If not, if not the incentive gear itself, I could definitely see them adding the components for Mystic Forging these the incentive gear. Yeah, to all yeah. current dungeons. Yeah, I can definitely see that being. That yeah, big. like they, they're going to have to. Otherwise, they're basically kind of running into the same problem that a vertical uh, progression MMO does when they launch, say, like an expansion. Right. Exactly. Where, and, where all that previous content is just obsolete. Yeah. So unless you like really want that skin. Like for some reason off those dungeons, like I don't actually really like any of the dungeon gear at the moment uh, in terms of skin for heavy armor, human male. Um, but unless you really want that skin, like there's no reason to do those dungeons unless they they backtrace it, which I think they will. Like it's it's going to be interesting seeing how they progress forward with this. But I think at, at least to that extent, looking at what they did with the legendary, um, the changes to legendary drop rates and that kind of stuff, I can see it being backdated. That, that'll happen. Probably. Not right. I think I think the most important thing every internet needs to look out for is how far they're going to place it down the the progression track. Like if they place it too close to exotics, then they're going to have the dilemma of nullifying exotics, maybe even rares. And oh, you mean in terms of attainability? Jump. Right. Because for all we know, this could be a terrible like I'm, masterwork to ascended gear jump. So I just got my full set of exotic like armor but i don't have exotic um like accessories right but the fact that you can get exotics from sorry get ascended accessories from doing this dungeon means i don't think i'll ever get exotic accessories unless i find them so I, right. that's already happened to some extent like if if their um idea of getting ascended gear is putting in effort and getting the gear as a result rather than having to grind for like gold or whatever to get exotics like you do have like have to at the moment um that, that i could i can already see it being the case that a bunch of people skip exotics it could, it, mm. but do, do you mind that i actually kind of find it a good thing that there's like an alternate route to uh, top level gear item well it's, it's not an alternate route it's just simply <laughs> skipping yeah i think it nullifies a lot of stuff especially just like things like oh i'm i'm working towards this exotic no no you're not you're working toward ascended gear now it's True. just I feel like it feels like you've wiped out a lot of progress people have made. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like oh. um, it's Thurbleton's statement of he was getting over this hand at Sandhill and then he found out there's another one just behind it. And it was like, ugh. Ugh, like, which might I be harder to climb. It's all placement. It's the correlation of forces. I, I'm actually, I actually don't mind placement too much. Um, I'm more worried about the difference in power between this ascended gear and exotics. I uh-huh. hope that difference is small. But it doesn't. I, look I don't like think it's going it can to. be big, considering it's going to be halfway between legendary and oh, it's, it's, exotic, it's, which is already pretty small. It seems like a, just a one of the descriptions they shows. Rate. Yeah, like given one of the descriptions they they showed, mm-hmm. it's very small. Like they're showing a ring uh, that the exotic would have forty eight power, forty eight precision, three percent magic find. The ascended would have fifty power, fifty precision, and ten percent magic find. No, there's a second set of stats there, isn't there? Your your the second set of stats is basically what replaces your current. Um, Jewel. Like sigil or rune. Jewel, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that 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 that's the question, right? What will the um, infused item, whatever you call them, going to have? What, what's it going to have on it? What's I feel like it's going to be infused? absolutely minimal. <laughs> Extra Do you think damage it's be against stats? whatever does. I'm agony. hoping it's not stats. I'm hoping. I it's... think it's going to be special for that specific um, dungeon. I feel like they See, could totally what I, do that's, that. That's what I'm afraid of. Like With their whole thing with, with Agony and that being tied to these infusions yep. and there potentially, potentially are going to be eventually you know, more types of infusions later on. They've said they're, they're currently launching with these, which yeah. you know, implies more later on. 
it 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 feels scarily reminiscent of um resistance gear stacking in old school wow right where so like in order to run this dungeon you had to go and get gear that had yeah. you know fire resist in order to have x right. number of fire resist That's exactly in order to make it to like that so dungeon yeah and and, and what the pro- the biggest problem with that is all the gear that you have been working towards and that you need for pretty much everything else in the game is has fucking null and void right. in order to actually But I feel like this these infusions are something you could replace really easily with other infusions. I wouldn't be surprised if these are swap and swap out infusions that are very simple. So what 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 would you be what would it be like then? Um complete a small quest. I don't know. Like, no, no, I mean, like just what, what, the actual item itself. Because I'm worried that so if you look at the actual the base stats trans, like given to you by an ascended item versus an exotic, as we said before, it's like ten percent difference, right? Um, right? But when you actually consider the fact that there's going to be offensive, omni, and defensive infusions, what could that mean? Like, what does that actually I'm mean? I'm assuming omni is middle ground between um, defense and offense. Defense, really? <sighs> what? Yeah, exactly. What does defense mean? Is agony. it going to actually just give you fucking defense against toughness? Agony. Like, is this gonna go? I would. I wouldn't be surprised if it it really just is defend against agony. Oh, offense then, then what's is offense? Extra then? damage against Morset. Oh God, really? Something as simple as that? Yeah. <laughs> Something as simple because I I highly doubt they want to make these things overpowered because I really hope so. I hope I because, I actually hope you're right. I hope it's like yeah. this, like the offensive ha- has less um agony resistance than the defensive, but right. gives you a bonus of in damage the, in that dungeon at higher levels of that dungeon. Like that could be yeah. I, I, I I'm honestly that. hoping they they take this the Lost Shore dungeon thing into its own thing. So it's like oh you have PvP and, and then you have the special dungeon, the Lost Shore dungeon where you it's like so Lost. Basically. Dead. You would have like you would have your dungeon gear, and then you would have your your um, lost, lost short gear. gear. Well, you um, wouldn't you wouldn't need to fun. because because of no, ascended no, because ascended to. and it's an entirely yeah, different ascended, slot. Yeah, because well, you, to some extent, assuming the infusion stuff is easily swappable, I, I would I considering hmm. how they've already made everything regarding stuff like that pretty simple to swap out. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. It's not simple to swap out. At the moment, you destroy your current one to put in a new one. That seems simple enough. It's not very effective. <laughs> like it's, yeah. it's pretty simple. Keep buying to replace. I, I don't yeah, think exactly. infusions are going to be simple. expensive if, if Agony is going to play a big role in those dungeons. If Agony plays a big role, I, I doubt they're going to make infusion too expensive. Uh, I, I'm, no, because they've, they've already said that um, the infusions, infusions in themselves. So essentially it's going to be a tier of gear, and that's going to be a set distance from um, exotics in terms of its stat the stats right. it confers towards you. But they've said that the actual infusions themselves are going to be their entirely own p- progression. There's going to be more powerful right. infusions than weaker yeah. infusions. Yeah, like actually, like like one of the last sentences they say in the future um, future item progression section of the, the update that she put out for this was that um, eventually you'll be able to kit yourself out with a full set of ascended gear and high-end infusions to help high you with the edge and game content. Yeah, exactly. Like, like I'm sh- I think ArenaNet wants to maintain that balance of you know, having that but not affecting just PvE game play in general. I think they really want to, I think, I believe, whatever my opinion is worth, probably very little, but <laughs> um, that I think they want to make some sort of its own closed environment where you fuck around in, the th- in this, but it doesn't really affect the outside See, I, world that much. I, I don't think that's the case given that last bit where she says, you know, to give you the edge in, in game content. Yeah. Um, it sounds like maybe what, Maybe what their intention instead is. Wait, did, did is she, to have was she referring more... to the what is it called infusion or the gear in general? Uh, she was referring to it as a whole. She said eventually you'll yeah. be able to kit yourself out with a full set of ascended gear and high end infusions to help give you the edge and game content. I, I think I'm assuming their that's intention... just because your gear is simply better than everything else. Well, I think what their intention with the ascended gear and kind of um, with the infusions along with that is, and and. and I think that the the issue is that their their intention is is sound, um, but maybe misguided. Mm-hmm. Um, no I think way. that their intention for Ascended is to have it be you know, kind of like we said before, kind of a, a prestige gear, yeah, um, gear that is slightly better than the gear that's currently out there, mm-hmm. uh, but also you know harder to get, yeah, um, a reasonable but, goal gear. But unnecessary to to do the end game content, 
possibly with the exception of you know getting further into the the lost shore but, stuff because yeah. of the um the the need of the infusions for the agony stuff yeah um but aside from that one type of dungeon it sounds like their intention is for it to be optional and you can go for this gear if you want to if you don't want to go for the insane crazy legendary but you want something higher than exotics and that's like i said that's not a terrible idea but you know, if 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 you know MMO players, fucking everybody's yeah. gonna want to get exactly. it because you it's want not, the best gear. Exactly. It's 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 not. It doesn't become an option. It's not like if you want the best gear. It is people want the best gear. Like legendaries yeah, are still like, an option because they're equivalent to ascended. Not because the, like it's not because they're just like crazy hard to get. People are just gonna aim for the best gear no matter what it is. And if that's ascended, they're gonna go for ascended, like straight up. Yeah. But yeah, so. I, I guess we're kind of talking around in circles now, but it's, it's, my main concern is, hey, I really hope these infusions aren't like, hey, you get plus 50 power. It better not be that case. If it's stuff <laughs> like you get, you do 30% more damage in this dungeon, dungeon. that's okay. Right. That's all right. Sure. Maybe the dungeon will add its own mechanics since it's all special and stuff like that, and maybe it plays into that. Who knows? Well, I think that's what I'm afraid of. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid they're going to add like like all these new dungeons are going to add their own mechanic that is going to be something that is obtainable. You know, the counter to it is obtainable through infusions, and so then you got to have your infusion set for this dungeon. You got to have your infusion set for that dungeon, and well, it's just, it's going to become a fucking mess of swapping out shit. It brings back to it's like another reason a lot of people were pissed because a lot of people were pissed aside from the fact that um, Arena has pretty much base their shit upon horizontal progression um a lot of people are pointing out the fact that hey arena has always said that what matters in guild wars 2 is skill not gear but and Mm -hmm. then immediately turn around and put in a thing that's not overcomable by skill but requires gear to overcome that is a a bit off in a lot of people's eyes yeah that's actually very off yeah i mean like you said they've always de-emphasized gear um, as being more of I mean, the whole point of gear in Guild Wars 2 up to this point is, you know, once you hit 80, uh, is, is really just kind of cosmetic. Yeah. I mean, exactly. that's why, you know, like legendaries, they're, you know, this ridiculously hard thing to get. Yeah. You gain nothing from it except for the, the, the cosmetic aspect of it. Yeah. And then, like you said, with, with the introduction of the agony mechanic and, and the infusions, you're now required, you're basically putting gear checks. Exactly. In, in your dungeon. Absolutely. Now. Because they've specifically said that it'll get to the point in the Fractals of the Mist that you will not be able to progress without better, like, um, agony diffusing gear. And that's right. stupid. That's stupid. But yeah. it, I guess a lot of it came from, because the justification for this, and I think this would be our last talking point on the subject, is that um, they they did this because of feedback from players. They did this because people thought that dungeons could be more difficult or like they wanted more challenges, I guess. Um, which and, is true because is true. remember that big complaint about, oh, we're like gimping dungeons because yeah. people are complaining about it. Exactly. And this is, I guess, what came out of it. And this then, is a hardcore dungeon. Yeah. And they, they made a difficult dungeon for people to bash their heads against, which is fine. Yeah. But they also apparently like received all this feedback of players going, hey, there's no gear progression at endgame. Um, and that's why they're doing this. Like, what, what do you guys think of that? Do you think that this is like they should have stuck with their guns and displeased all those people and never had it, any form of endgame progression? I, if it's yes, like noob because says... Because that was not what this game was supposed to be. True, to some extent. Exactly, that, that, that's like the two sides of the argument. Noob's argument of, hey, if this only affects progression in this specific dungeon, it kind of appeases those people, is is correct to some extent. But Durin's counterpoint of, hey, what if other dungeons also have their unique mechanics that you also have to get this crazy shit for? Like, that isn't... It's like essentially the slippery slope argument. Like, is, is this going to be a slippery slope? I, I feel like this dungeon's going to be accessible because according to whatever else they've shown in this game, it's a very accessible game regardless of what gear you have. Right. And sure, you might have to infuse stuff, but I don't think they're going to go over the top saying like, oh, you have to spend hundreds of hours finding these crazy infused gears to play this dungeon. I, I just don't think that's something they would do. Duran? I... I... I don't know. I, I I hate to speculate any further, just because I I want to hope that that's 
that that's not the direction that they go. Yep. I, I, I want to have faith that they know what they're doing and that, that maybe this, this whole agony thing is just kind of a one-off experiment that they're doing that, you know, when and if players don't respond necessarily, um, or I guess it's already happened. Players haven't responded as, as positively as maybe yeah. they would have liked. Um, that, you know, maybe they'll just keep that to this. And kind of like we said earlier, maybe, you know, make, make Lost Shores kind of its own other mode outside of normal dungeoneering. Um, and, you know, maybe have further dungeons be, I hesitate saying more standard cause that just sounds boring. <laughs> um, but more in line with what makes Guild Wars 2 Guild Wars 2. Right. Which is not what they're doing here. At least, at least not from what we've seen at the moment. Therbleton, any reactions? Um, I, I think that it's the, the agony mechanic is okay as long as it stays in the dungeon, <laughs> uh, much like you guys have said. And doesn't intrude into my uh, other shit. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't come in world v world. Well, it's like, hey, we've added a whole other dungeon that it's like spoilers. It's got more agony. Yay. Um, but no, it's it's I'm okay, and I think it's gr- uh, a great idea that they have like this. You know, a couple months from now, we'll have you know a dozen uh, uh, options instead of just like the nine. Uh, right. They just keep adding more things to do in that. Uh, Assuming that fun and, and hoping that they do that. I hope that they do. Yeah, but we don't know if they will. Yeah. Um. But that being said, I, I really would like to see uh, in the long term, I guess, Reunit stick to their guns. And it, it is a tougher t- uh, path to follow, but making the focus more on art design instead of just gear progression and adding, yeah. like, you know, uh, and it's, it's, like you said, Ascension 2.0. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I, I would so just like to see that more yeah. than just gear. Wait and see. I, I, I'm just wondering, like, how different would it be? Like how different would the reaction to this entire thing be if um it became if if ascended gear and inverted commas wasn't like was replaced by like uh, one of the idea I had in the long past was hey imagine if dyes were could glow right that, that was something I said before gear was to come out right <laughs> glowing gear yeah how cool would it be if instead of this entire ascended gear bullshit if they just had like this new set of dyes that gave you resistance to agony. That made you go, oh, like no, fuck that. like cooler well, progressions of dice. Like the dice looked awesome. No, see the, pro- the the problem you're gonna have with that is that unless you had every single color that is currently available, but in a glowing like a, yeah, like um, a cool effect. version of it, like a, like a crazy like unless you did that, animated you version end up of it with the fucking clown suits of wow. <laughs> yeah, but what what if they just straight up took the current gear and like gave it a cool effect, like the equivalent of the molten armor effect given to you by that hammer, like some cool effect on that gear on that item, which also gives you resistances oh, to. The problem that, that, that's that how is, I would have assumed. Uh, the problem with that is that kind of that kind of that kind of overlaps with the legendary. Like, what's cool about the legendary gear a lot of times, like that that's yeah. where your kind of cool effects and animations and stuff are going to really be. Um, I think going forward. Yeah. I mean, have you, um, Cynic? Have you read the names of all of the sets that I'm assuming are going to be ascended? No, I have not. Let me just see. Let me just Google this. But you could go on. I'll find it. <laughs> but either way, like, I, it, it's going to be interesting seeing this going forward. I'm. Trepidation says, I, I, I'm taking the same wait and see approach as um, pretty much the rest of the guys. I'm not going to say the world is ending yet. But then again, like, it, it, Guild Wars 2 is Guild Wars 2. I've already gotten hundreds of hours worth of fun from it. I don't mind to see, like, it's a free to play game. I don't mind to see them experiment. I, I kind of, I mean, just see, like, this experiment clearly, in my opinion, failed to a large extent. Okay, never mind. Apparently, these are actually confirmed for exotic. I don't know why they named that Yakington's ring when they have exotic Yakington's <laughs> armor. <laughs> never mind. Um, yeah, I, I just want to see them experiment more and see where they go with this. I, I hope I their think, next one is a little bit less player intrusive. But we'll see. I think it's it's completely um, it's going to be completely um, based on how well they balance this out. Yeah, like if they off balance this, this is gonna fuck everything up yeah. because they're they're, just, they're on the entire a progression knife edge of armor with this this specific but thing. I, I don't know. I, Would I, you I guys like to see Guild Wars Two for good or Arena Net for pretty good balancing, just in general, PvP, PVE wise? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's uh, I'm not sure if uh, I just based off my uh, history with WoW, uh, they would do this, but like before the patch would come out they would offer testing and all that sort of just like a, a oh, right. pre-patch server. Would mm-hmm. you like to see something like that for uh, ArenaNet or uh, just like that, 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 that may no put, PTR. yeah, that, that may put some of the community's, you know, concerns to rest if we could see this before it was out. 
and I put our, our. But the problem with that is, if they just complain just for the sake of complaining. Yeah, there, is, there, like everyone. This is the internet. There is a small yeah. uh, group that is very vocal that purely just wants to complain because they don't get <laughs> things their way. Yeah, um, I would. And it also ruins it to some extent. Like it, it ruins the surprise of a lot. Of, like I know that. Um, like for the WoW stuff. You can't like a lot of people can't speak about the stuff they see in those previous shows, right? There's NDAs. Oh no, no, no! We're talking about no. PT, uh, public test realm. Public test realm. Oh, okay. Where you can basically go in and 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 it's a, sort of a, a beta test of the upcoming patch. But so people who are on those public test realms can speak about what they're seeing there. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So everybody, I, everybody has access to it. So that kind of so that's what I'm. I I wouldn't want to see that because to me. Um, I'm logging on this weekend and probably going to play more this weekend than I have for the past couple of weeks because this yeah, is same. like new stuff I haven't heard of before, I haven't seen before, and so stuff like I haven't like stuff that's going to be new to everyone involved, and that's going to that's you're going to lose that if you have a public test servers, right? Um, I would love to see them. Said, yeah. I, I would love to see them have closed test servers more because I, I think that a lot of this would have been assuaged if they did go to like the top dungeoneers out there and and oh it should be for the people who spent extra 20 dollars and got nothing out of it those public beta tests or private beta tests um so like just like literally just take more fan feedback into their decisions um but i don't think they should make it public just because no, yeah absolutely it's people are dicks it's, <laughs> um, because and, the internet that's why but i would love to see i would love 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 to see um a public beta server for pvp changes because looking at this like um this patch list for the class changes i i can't wait to delve into this and i obviously won't do it on air but um yeah i, I can't wait to see what these changes do for pvp going forward and and it would be better to me if they didn't make this huge a fucking shift at this time, as opposed to making lot more smaller changes to the meta. Anyway, um, the, I think the last thing we want to talk about today, it's probably going to be a quick one because we're already at two hours. Oh, we can, we can spend as much time as we want, I guess. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to have to go before much longer. So yeah, just, so, yeah, I need to get to sleep soon, too, for work. In like, yeah. What do you guys think of, <laughs> now that we've seen some of it, the Lost Shores? What do you guys think of the trailer for the Lost Shores PvE content? Um, I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, is, is that is that the the, the one with the monster? Cool. The only one I saw was the. the it's it's the, not uh, zombies. It's not zombies. That that's, one for a event. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm out then. I mean, <laughs> um, it's the one with the monster jumping out of the ocean and all that shit. Let's see if I can. Where find can it. I find this trailer? Someone link it. To uh, oh, yeah, I did see that you. one. Yeah, I'll link it to you. Let's see if I can find it. Um, let's see. So a giraffe walks into a bar yep. and he sees a. A lion? What does he say to the lion? Hello? I'm a giraffe. Ah, you guys are fucking blind. <laughs> oh, well, no, we just know your sense of humor, so <laughs> go with whatever is the least funny thing. That's yeah, that's, you're that's exactly. what were wow. you going to say, noob? What Thanks, were you going to say? Um, I was trying. I was going to try to think about an answer, but I realized that I that joke the, uh, would go nowhere. The so, yeah, there, there's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the other option. God damn it. So, but anyway, yeah, they, they have a lot of events that are. Um, okay, thank you. Th- th- there's the one time, you know, only going to happen once in the world. But there's also a lot of uh, for Friday the 16th as mm-hmm. well as the 17th. Uh, there's like it's going to happen once, but it's going to be a day long event sort of thing. Right. Um, and these look like head crabs. Oh my god. Yeah, but what beyond that, I, I kind of reacting with new. But like they've made a lot of new ent- entire new enemy designs. Like straight up new character models for all, like a bunch of the enemies I'm seeing in this trailer. That's kind of cool. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. actually kind of surprised by that. They made it like a whole. I new hope this game and... plays more on the shore and less in the water. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely hope that because if I just hope for your sake, sure. it's all in the water. Yeah, I hope it's all in the water. And also, Do you really this, this, for your own new, sake, no, would you want? No, have you gotten part of the trailer where the big enemy jumps out of the water yet, noob? Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I finished. Uh, it. I I think he looks dumb. <laughs> He does look. <laughs> oh god, this is not for. I feel like this is something out of a movie. I don't know. It reminds me of something very familiar. What the the thing coming out it's of the jumping water? Jumping out of the thing that came out of the water. So okay, I'm watching through this trailer again. Yeah. <clears throat> for the second time, mm-hmm. and this is something I've seen in games uh, quite a bit. This, yeah, I, I guess, generation. Even though we're talking PC games here. Yep. Um. So, like, to game developers, even though none of them are listening. If you're gonna make a trailer for your game, <laughs> uh-huh. maybe don't pick clips 
that have fucking enemies or body parts or anything clipping through each other oh, yeah. like it's a fucking video game. You know, oh. you know what's like uh, Paradox probably makes the good best trailers for Hearts of Iron 3 and Victoria 2. It's menus. Menus. <laughs> it's literally menus. Well, I mean, that's what that game and, is. And for I Finest mean, Hour, they, they opened up like a drawing app and they drew over the map. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the, the trailer. <laughs> and I love those trailers. I think Arena Net should just dive into menus. Uh, but yeah, so uh, d- during what are your reactions? Just I- open up the map and look at Lost Shore. That's I think the new enemies designs uh, look dumb, but I think it's They cool look like they something out of a sci-fi game. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's 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 clearly a, you know, um marine-based Yep. thing. Mm-hmm. So I, the enemies make like sense for that. The designs are completely unique. The Guild Wars 2 like the current game stuff yeah. seems like a lot of stuff coming back from the original Guild Wars mm-hmm. assets or just like designs in general. Yeah. This seems like a huge departure from what other Guild Wars stuff has been. Like those little things, those are clearly from Half Life Two. They got lost. <laughs> well, I was they gonna say at the same time, Half-Life you're also fighting giant crabs, so that's not really unique. Maybe unique compared to Guild Wars One, but yeah, but Final they're boss not. They're already. not terrible. They, they they make sense thematically with with what's going on. Yeah, they're not terrible looking. They're maybe maybe uninspired. Um, mm-hmm. but. The fact that they can I don't make like, them... I don't, I don't like I don't like to judge content based on the trailer because the trailers oh, yeah, definitely. are rarely like they rarely have anything to do with the actual content. They're just they're trying to make right. it look way more exciting than it's actually gonna Except be. In <laughs> Hearts of Iron Three, where it doesn't look much more exciting than it's gonna be. In, in general, <laughs> I can say that like are you gonna like delve into this new PvE content, gonna explore all of it you can, et cetera, et cetera? Oh yeah. Uh, oh definitely. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some of it, but uh I don't I don't think I have. I think I have one exotic right now. Um, wow! So, jeez, guys, I what have, the hell? I have two exotics. Okay, I, well, no, Cynic, actually, no, wrong. I have one fair, exotic too. So, for anybody listening who doesn't know, <laughs> Cynic only has a full set of exotics because he spent real money on them. Fuck yeah! Otherwise, he'd be in the same position that I am. Actually, yeah, he would be in the worst at least position. I, I, I had have the, uh, any pieces. I'd, I had the integrity to not like. I Turn had one exotic. Your cash, basically, what you did. You had one, okay. And I just so I looked at the say- game. Well, I, I, it just, we discussed this on the podcast. I was like, "Hey, gem price has gone up. I'm going to do that," and I totally did. Like, we went out yeah. right there. I totally went I'm out. Insane. Like, like, fuck it. I'm just going to buy. What the hell, guys? My end game gear. <laughs> twenty bucks. That was a good twenty bucks spent because I don't have to worry do you about. You also buy your armor for I, a while. And your shoulder. Now I will say, I do have all my pieces picked out. Yeah. <laughs> I just it, it's going to require a lot of runs because I'm picky. And they they come from many different places. Oh, oh are you doing dungeons? Because I'm looking at dungeon armor too. I mean, uh, my yeah. gear is more or less set. I'll just like I'll, I'll finish getting like exotic stats and then transmute it back you're to what I'm looking right, at. Right, right. Tell me what um, you're doing. So we can I, I am looking for like a dawn, but that is just you know actually, a wait, dream. Durin, you are actually incorrect. Here. I forge my my gear well no i didn't but i, I had my box of draconic armor <laughs> from before yeah bullshit I box of draconic so. armor is something i spent money on a long time ago and that money i i got mm-hmm. by actually playing so, the game so the stats came from me actually playing the skin came from me paying money and that was fun how much did you pay okay. uh 20 bucks gave me what was like nine gold or whatever at the time that's and then a lot I, of gold I, I just spent that on it just skins for my shit how i had all my stats nine from after you spent that before. much on gold the only the only new like new set of stats I got was on my sword. I finally got an exotic sword. To be fair, you got you spent twenty dollars and you you got something you would use. I spent yep. twenty dollars and I got two costumes. So I guess I can't really. <laughs> I, say hey man, anything. costume brawls. Yeah, costume, costume brawls. Yeah. No one plays costume brawl with me. I initiate a fight. And they just stand there in regular. Armor. Oh, I do all I'm the like, time. Fuck you. Like, if we're standing around waiting to go into a dungeon, I will. St- I'll go hop over to my witch outfit and start beating up. Oh, people. you bought costumes too. Which costumes do you have? Just, just the witch one. Oh, I got the witch one and the... Uh, Mostly man. because the, the broom riding is fucking awesome. <laughs> no, the best thing is you can interchange costumes. So I have a broom on my Mad King Thorn and Mad King yeah, Thorn. Yeah, Oh, broom. that'd be great. I didn't that's think about that. Great. No, the, 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 the witch is nice, though, because you can just drop a cauldron and yeah. give somebody a costume so yeah, they can that's get fun. something fun, yeah. too, so you can fight. Anyway, and with that... Oh. I, oh, I guess we oh, can look, say someone without costumes joining in the conversation. See How about you get the fuck in out? the Lost Shores. Um, it, no, no. Anyone found got shores. any plugs? Once we get there, it's found shores. New Brown, oh, right. plug? I would like to. I would like to yeah. plug um, thigh crushing adorable or something. I don't remember the guild name, but I 
or something. DFC application, um, cover letter, resume, what else? Interview, something Blood like type. that. Do not Blood do type. not go and to the delicious flat chest. <laughs> the angle of your chest, please. <laughs> um, put a protractor on your chest and just tell me what the angle you get is. But I was probably just asking for that, and not pictures. Um, pictures, it's, it's a little bit tough because I'm on the watch list for my ISP and I don't really want to do anything oh, that okay. gets me arrested again, but, um, they can't prove anything because yeah, um, they're drawings. Durin, you need to plug this week. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know that this will go up before then. Um, but, uh, Friday night is totally going to be fucking karaoke night again. Oh, good. On That's cool. Apple. Um, I know Shinboy already has Queen lined up for kind of starting things off for the huh. night, so it can only, you know. Oh God! It, it, it can only be amazing, basically. Uh, I, I was surprised yeah. when I heard you guys didn't do Queen last time. I, I think he was. Yeah, well. he did, did. He didn't think about it, and I was like, oh my God. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. Um, there, there will be there will there will be some drunk people in there, so that should be a real good time. Yeah. Uh, and I will most likely, I'd be very surprised if I wasn't streaming it. So if you want to check that out, just go to my, my Twitch channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Duran. Yay. Uh, aside from that, we are going to, I, I need to talk with Thurb a little bit more um, after the podcast. Uh, but we, we both are, are definitely expressing interest in wanting to do some kind of a structured PvP night yes, with the guild. Finally. Um, so we, we, we need to set that up. Yeah. So as soon as we have more concrete details, we'll we'll share that as well. Yay! That should happen. That should definitely happen. I'll be there, uh, or I'll try to be there because it's gonna be American time, right? I might not be able to make. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so that Thurbleton, any plugs? Uh, cool. Yeah, I got a few. Um, a shout out to Rayos uh, when you're talking about just like you know uh, silly looking armor and all that for a human. Uh, silly looking armor is a char <laughs> in Silvari gear. <laughs> <laughs> because he looks silly and it's awesome. Fabulous. Uh, yes, he looks fabulous. Was, wait, uh, was that the guy that with like the full-on has. decked out rainbow colored? He has yes. the, I believe, Twilight Arbor set with the shoulders that like go off like spikes from some oh, crazy fairy tale. That was I love good. it. That was pretty good. Plus, char on a dress is just awesome. Absolutely. Um, anyway, also a heads up, it's the, for this weekend, the Lost Wars weekend, uh, we are changing from doing uh, there's, there shouldn't be any structured P- PvP or not structured uh, world versus world uh, things going on. Instead, we're just going to focus on the new content as well as trying to get as many people through story dungeons as they can. Oh, cool. So let's uh, hop on. Shout out that you're trying to get a group together, and hopefully the Lincoln Force community will uh, get everyone through those stories. Um, kind of jerks. Awesome, because I've got a lot of stories to get through. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, just just because they're fun and all that. Oh, Cynic, we have to do the story missions. Oh yeah, we, we have to find subs. A uh, a quick heads up that this, this is just a uh, rumor mill heard at the grapevine, but apparently guesting is on the spoke. Uh, basically, whenever uh, whenever they asked uh, people asked the devs, they said they couldn't give a time, but said like either very soon or in the next few like next the week or so. The hell is very soon? I think that's... Wait, did you say next week or so? Years. Well, yeah, like th- this week they would say next week or the week after sort of thing. If they, oh, they, can't, they can't give a correct that. date, but apparently that is supposed to be coming very very soon, like this Fancy. month. I'm, I'm super excited for that. I, I, yeah. I've got play- friends, I've said before, I've got friends playing on another server, that and cool. that would be so awesome to actually be able to play together. Yeah, and we can reunite and, with uh, Maystack and stuff. So. Yeah, it, yeah. Should, it, it should be a lot of fun, finally. Yay. Uh, <laughs> and I guess one Guild last thing. A lot of fun, finally. <laughs> one last thing is, uh, I doubt he listens to this, but the dev we spoke to um, a couple weeks ago, uh, Josh, who mm-hmm. basically created the Lion's Art statue and uh, the famed Halloween jumping puzzle. Yep. Uh, apparently he had to basically apologize to everybody for making that thing uh, <laughs> over the... the I didn't have any issues with it, but apparently some people like Riven did. I don't know. Oh, really? I, but, I'm surprised. Yeah. I'm totally for, surprised. For making, oh, the jumping puzzle. The jumping puzzle. Yeah, the jump, jumping puzzle of rage. He had to Is apologize for that. the guy that was that. supposed to be on the podcast? And so, yeah, I guess I should about go ahead and point out, because at this point, I think we, we're pretty safe to know yeah. it's not going to happen. We, oh. we had, had talks uh, with, there's some communications back and forth with Josh. Uh, we were hoping to have him on the podcast. Um, we, we were hoping like around the time that the Halloween event was going on, because he was involved in all of that. Uh, but 
unfortunately, as a lot of you listeners might know, um, we sometimes say some vulgar things on we're this podcast. Ra- we're it raw happens. on this podcast. We're pretty raw. We are a bit raw. Um, yeah, and, raw and meat. The last communication that we got back from him was that he was totally down with doing the show, um, but PR needed to vet our podcast. I, I don't think that's going to happen. And that was about three weeks ago. Yeah, You're not a PR-friendly podcast. No. And, and pretty much as soon as we received that email, we knew that it was probably not going to happen. <laughs> it's because Duran's um, on this podcast. Yeah. But any, yeah. anyway, if, if you see him in game, his, his handle scribe, just, you know, tell a story that, that's hopefully nice about, like, you know, the puzzle or something. Um, is there a nice story about the puzzle? I mean, is Yeah, there? I had fun with it. There was this awesome time <laughs> where this guy threw a mouse and we all laughed. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was, okay. That was a good story. I, I never got that. to the top of that. Or the time where he threw a mouse and uh, then everyone so laughed and then happy, I still finished. Uh, happy go lucky me. I just go my way. Um, I did want to. Uh, I, I was actually going to. Oh, go ahead. Please stop. I was going to sing a seven. Um, Damn. I was actually going to uh, ask you this off of, off air before we started the podcast, but I feel like we we definitely need to cover it before we end this show. Um, so our, next week is Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah. We typically record these in America, on, like Friday, <laughs> Saturday night. Yeah. Um, are we? Are we still on for recording next week, or are we taking the, the Thanksgiving weekend Ooh, off? Well, I, I don't have idea. Thanksgiving, because I had Thanksgiving in October. Yeah, but we I don't, don't know, but have Thanksgiving, so I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, okay, so there, there's this uh, the thing called Black Friday that basically, you know, nullifies yeah. me from doing anything fun mm-hmm. with or with that, like, you know, with family or with that. friends. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Um no, we'll see if we can do something. Oh, we'll do that's, something. That's when we can do the anime cast. Yeah, we'll do, we say, will do something do next week. Cast. Something will happen. Um, okay. Something something off topic will happen, and probably Ma- maybe off topic, pro- maybe on topic. We'll see. We'll see. Probably off topic. I don't know. Um, and those, um, then we we are definitely doing another episode of the Scotch Cast. That's gonna happen. That's gonna be recording later this weekend, and probably be up by Monday. So, for those waiting for the giant bomb bombcast, we'll probably be there to help you wait. Um, aside from that. Uh, you can contact us at the linking cast at gmail.com. Worrying, don't agree. Uh, that ball, you or at the linking cast on Twitter. Do ball, not go to the linking cast Facebook page because that is new no. playground. No, 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 wait, wait. I'm, I'm going to stop right here. You have to. Okay, so www.facebook.com slash the linking cast. This is where you can send me all of your deepest, darkest secrets, your address, your social security number, anything, because I am willing to listen. So we need to do this podcast where we're all in the same room. So we can just cut his mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I know that I'm is absolutely like using it an impossibility. Slash not really secretly <laughs> since I've said it out loud now. Well, as like an interesting yeah, public we're, experiment we're, we're, to see who the fuck even remotely doing it for Pax Australia, right? Uh, oh, God, Pax Australia. Oh, that's yeah. oh God. <laughs> I'm not, I, I don't know if I would be able to. Oh, right. We got, we got an invitation to Guild Wars Con where we get a panel. Right, guys? No. Right? No. That would be the worst idea anybody could ever do. Would be anyway, to panel. that was episode Think 29. Bother Thank you for listening. Bother you never bother me. I feel happy and fine. Aha. Uh-huh. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. I'm just going to let this play out. Go, go, keep going. I'm just going to let you play. I'm just going to fade you. Not a lot. I don't need a lot. Coffee's only a dime. Living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight, having a wonderful time. Okay, that's all I got. That's all I got.